record all this stuff for posterity and let's play us in in three, two, one. A coop de grass I'll leave to the wolves and gila monsters. I'm gonna sell propane and propane accessories. <laughs> The Morning Stream. The good guys will come and get you. Okay? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to TMS. It's the Morning Stream for Wednesday, September 4th, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson, and that is Brian Ibbett. Hi. Hi. Well, hi. And welcome to (laughs) the middle of the week, which... <clears throat> Doesn't feel like the middle of the week because we had a whole weird Monday off thing and mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, screw that holiday, by the way, because I hate yeah. all the bank disruption. It just annoys me because it's always at the first of the month, right? Always. So what right. you end up having is at the end of the month, all your billing crap comes through and you can't transact any of it because you're waiting for Monday to end. Like it's yeah. literally yeah. called Labor Day. Go work at right. the bank. <laughs> it should be called Unlabor Day because right? you're not working. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly my point. Uh, hey, it's and good I'll, to be once here. Once again, we have to celebrate all the women who gave labor to have all of us. Oh, is that? I wish that was the reason. Yeah, that's the whole. That's what, what it is. It is that not right? Is I, that? Is it? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's all. Oh. Uh, you know, just you know, labor. Uh, you know what though? Let's switch it. I like your then idea. Why do they sell Labor Day cards that say, "Dear Mom, thanks for laboring." I mean, uh, on, uh, laboring to squeeze me out. Do they really? Sell, does can you really get those? Is that a thing? No, I don't think you can. Oh, think that'd be a, that's a great joke yeah. to play. That's a thing we could make money on. <laughs> you know what? Next year right, we're Labor doing Day cards. Let's yeah. do it for 2025. We're doing it. 2025 is coming quick. We're going to be ready. On the Frog Pants Store uh, Labor Day cards yeah. for you to send to your mom. Mark Perfect. their calendars now, everybody. Uh, hey, we got all kinds of crap today. Uh, it's going to be a busy, fun show. And um, I want to play a phone call to, just to get one more freaking wasp call out of the way. <laughs> okay. All right. If we have got, right, if yeah. there's ever been enough of one thing in the year 2024, it's probably Phew. all this wasp stuff. Yeah. Right? Well, the wasp wasp dust is the new carbonated meat. Yeah. <laughs> is the new uh, mystery woman in Brian's dream. That's I right. I guess there's a lot of that going around. That's yeah. right. Okay. And all, I, I, honestly, it also had this other effect of multiple people trying to find me and saying, what's the brand again? Where do I get mm. it? Like mm-hmm. apparently the wasps are out to to get you this year, and everybody yeah. wants a solution. So, uh, so anyway, we got this call. This is to answer. Uh, this is really aimed at you. So uh, I'll play it. Here we go. Uh, where is it? Here it is. <laughs> hey, Boot and Scoot. Um, long time listener, first time caller. I just wanted to answer Brian's question on how you use that tempo dust, the wasp dust that Scott's been using. Um, it's called a dust stick. Love the show, though. Okay, he says something about a dust stick. A dust stick. Yeah. Okay. Got to do it in his accent, though. Dust stick. A dust stick. By the way, uh, you all cannot ever, none of you can ever call a scoot and boot again. He has taken it. Uh, it, it 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 works so well in his accent that uh, all you other uh, all you other potatoes are just in potatoes. Mm-hmm. So what's the what's the all you other potatoes are much more potatoes. That's it. That's yeah. it. All the other potatoes are just uh, <laughs> potatoes. Yeah, cool. That's exactly what uh, uh, Eminem said. Yeah, that was. Those are the lyrics. Look them up, everyone. Um, yeah, no, he. I love. By the way, love that accent. All right. Yeah. So we are not yeah. making fun. I actually really. Yeah, I won't it. watch a movie, a whole movie with it, but I will. I will happily go and have a beer with him. Oh, I'll sit and talk uh, to him for days. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let's sit on your porch. Let's talk about the old days, the new days, every all all Whittle, the days in between. We'll do some whittling. Whittling, you know, Brian. I, some whittling. I know, I know. I'm stereotyping. He probably does not. He's probably never whittled. But I want to take up whittling, and I want to do it with that guy. Yeah. So write in. Let us know how much whittling you've done because we're interested now. <laughs> but a anyway, whittling or a lot of whittling. A lot of whittling. All the whittling. And uh, anyway, so uh, yeah. that's interesting. <laughs> I still don't know what he means by the the stick though. So yeah, wasp dust stick. Is there? Um, we just pour I it because it comes with a nozzle. It's like a little almost glue shape. The, you've just, got you've got the benefit of your wasps coming from a hole in the ground, which gravity uh, and dust works together in tandem to bring the, the dust down to the ground to the hole. Right. I've got wasps up in these eaves that. Um, you thought I killed uh, stuff before when I used the spray and, and dropped it on Tina's. Uh, 
uh, herb planter. Yeah. But I can't imagine that dust wouldn't spread f- more far and wide. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I if I just <laughs> toss it up there. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. It. I don't know how. Like, I don't know how to do a higher nest with this stuff. So yeah. maybe that's what he's referring to, and it's some kind well, of stick. I'm seeing the Dionymaceus Earth Powder Sprayer, multi-purpose powder sprayer, indoor and outdoor, with length adjustable. Blah blah blah. Seeing one of these things on Amazon here, I'll give you a link. Oh yeah. So if that's got a nozzle on it or something, that makes sense. It d- right? looks like yeah. It looks like it's um uh instead of having oh sorry for the long link. It's right. Instead of having a little sprayer. Um, it's got oh, a little squeeze that. ball on it, right? So you put the powder in that little thing close to the, close to the business end. <laughs> yeah. And then, and you just squeeze ball that business and it goes, Yeah, this must be it. This has to be it. Yeah. That's gotta be the wand as he's talking about. That yeah. would work, you know? Yeah. And then you just, you just wand the. Won the crap out of it, and it's just dimatious. you just do the dimatious. Dimatious. Really? No. no, diatomaceous. No, there's too too many. It's it's diced tomato is what it is. Diced tomatius. Diced, diced tomatius. I haven't seen him in a while. Is he in the chat today? I haven't seen. Well, yeah, he's no. I haven't seen him in forever. D i a t o m a c. I believe the aceous. Diatomaceous is what I would say. Diatomaceous. Let's see if anyone has a pronunciation. These are always fun. Um, Today we are looking at the pronunciation. <laughs> I of love the that word. guy. He's my he's this my is f- a word he's my favorite. Lost powder spraying tools. <laughs> uh, oh, there's no like. Well, maybe there is, oh, really? and I just can't find oh, it. Uh, um, it's a deposit, though. This is interesting. It's a uh, okay, a naturally occurring soft, silicious, sedimentary rock that can be crumbled into a fine white off uh, powder. And this is the powder you use, I guess. I don't know if you treat it or oh, do something else to it, but that's interesting. Um, I can't find it. Um, I yeah. have a link. You want a link? Yeah, please. I can't find one. Where'd okay, you... here you go. And and guess what? Guess who it's from, Scott? Uh, uh just it's, YouTube. It's from our guy. It's from our. Uh, is it our dude? From our guy. It's our dude. Yeah. All versus... right. All right. Let's check this out. I love this guy. He's let's see favorite. how close my prediction was. All right. Here we go. We're gonna turn the volume up. I'm going to be looking at how to say more interesting and related names and some of the most mispronounced ones as well. So make sure to stay tuned and consider subscribing for more learning. How do you I'm not going to subscribe to your how to pronounce words. I know, I'm not. There's no way in hell. All right, here we go. How do you say it? Diatomaceous. Diatomaceous? Diatomaceous. Do we believe him? Sure. Okay. He's got a channel. <laughs> no, he must be. It must be real. It must be legit. Yeah. It must be yeah. the most Who legit. Who tells him how to pronounce these things? Yeah. No, uh, where's he, what's his learning process? I'd Who love to know. Who watches the watchers? Yeah. Interesting. There's lots of commercial uses. Watch, it, says, it says here, uh, let's see, New Zealand is a, is a big producer of this stuff, it says. Uh, yeah, let's see. Okay, here you go. If you mill it or micronize it, uh, it becomes very fine and is used as an insecticide. You know, this sounds like it's actually kind of a natural way of doing this. This is good. Yeah, There's no so chemicals in which, it. Yeah, which is why it's not harmful to uh, pets or kids, too, which is nice. Yeah, was used uh, for... Still, a... still, I'm closing the uh, barbecue grill lid before I toss that powder up in the eaves. Yeah, you don't want it in your meat. Oh, my gosh. No. Although, it no, used no. to be in toothpaste, it says here. Uh, let's see. Really? Yeah, who's toothpaste? doesn't say brands. They don't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says the reason this works is it creates an outer layer on the exoskeletons of the insects and it acts as a barrier that resists the loss of water vapor from the insect's body. It damages the layer, increases the evaporation of water from their bodies so that they dehydrate fatally. Okay. Well, that's wow. that's a gnarly way to go, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it just deterred them, but this is, uh, wow. Well. Yeah, well, my spray, not, not as, uh, you know... Oh, Brian, you're so horrible using that spray. You need to use the powder. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, it's also a feed additive. So there is a <clears throat> there is a food grade version of it, and they use it in. Let's see. Uh, it's approved by the Food and Drug Administration as a feed additive to prevent caking. So oh. some poultry. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't want to eat this. I, I feel like I've learned something yeah, I don't no. want to know. You know? No, exactly. I don't want I'm a food safe or whatever. I don't care. I'm not. I'm not eating this. Nah, it's not killing. putting it any, anywhere near any food. Yeah, and if Thank it's in you. if it's in food I already eat, I don't want to know. Don't tell yeah. me about it. Oh, okay. let my let my chickens cake. Whatever that means. <laughs> uh, 
Shake and I remember, cake. I yeah. remember when Marie Antoinette said that. Let my chickens cake. Yeah. I remember that was uh, yeah. such a great uh, saying attributed to uh, to Marie Antoinette. She was famous for it, you know. She was. And then, then she said, off with my head. And then they said, oh, well, okay, Marie. Right. Well, speaking of a place you're never going to eat any weird uh, powder, uh, there has yeah. been a freeing up of a king-size bedroom at the yes. Southeast Frog Pants Meetup, or uh, excuse me, Tadpooly Meetup, TMS Meetup. And uh, the reason I know this for sure is, A, Brian's <laughs> aware of it, and B, it was going to be my room, but we can't go now. Uh, other other travel things are happening, family things and all kinds of crap, and I can't go. It was already kind of on the edge, yeah. but it's not yeah. going to happen this year for me, unfortunately. I would really like to go the next year, and I will plan on it. However, on October 4th through 6th in Savannah, Georgia, if you all or anyone out there is like, oh, great, I was really hoping one would free up, one has. One has freed up. And look, you know, you go out there, we're going to do a ghost tour. We're going to eat some yummy food. Chuck is going to make us awesome coffee in the morning. Uh, September is going to make us some awesome cocktails. They're all going to get together and make us a yummy breakfast. Brian Dunaway is going to be there with his, with about, uh, I think, three metric tons of, of um, old TVs, a VCR, a Laserdisc player, a, a PS Vita, mm. uh, a... Uh, 3DO. Uh, and look, good. you've got, you don't have Scott, but you do have three fourths of the film set crew will be there if you count my impersonation of Randy, which I will do every morning while I drink the coffee that Chuck makes. Yeah, that makes a th- fourth of it, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's exactly. Totally fine. That, that, it's a whole fourth. Um, yeah, Ooh, it sounds this like. Coffee is great. <laughs> is this, are you using a Nicarag- Nicaraguan, uh, Nicaraguan blend uh, for the. Uh, the fact that you did that pronunciation is the most dead. I'm telling you, it's almost more Randy than Randy. All right, so. <laughs> it's, it's something Randy doesn't do very often, but he mm. did it once or twice, and and because of that, it's it's always going to be my part of my impersonation. Yeah, and if you want to see something shitty on VHS, Dunaway's got you covered. Like all those reasons yeah. to go. Yeah, can't remember uh, what the crap we watched last year, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. And if you want to go October fourth through sixth, I think they would, would reach out and find Chuck, or because they're yeah, kind of running the that. Discord is your best bet inside the <clears throat> inside the Discord. Uh, the Frog Pants Discord is a channel called Meetups, mm-hmm. and uh, in there you will find information about the, uh, I'm sorry, Frog Pants Meetups, and in there you'll find one under Meetup Forum called Southeast Meetup 2024. Really, um, this this thing almost should get top level status uh, along could we do the TMS Vegas one in there this mm-hmm. is becoming once you do once you've done two I think it becomes a, a regular <laughs> and you'll think it becomes a top level that's right uh, top level deal but uh, yeah you'll find the link in the um, in the meetup forum for Southeast Meetup 2024 and that actually has not just your information on how to contact Chuck and get that room but also like links to buy tickets for all the other things that that we're doing if you want to join us for those and if you don't that's fine too you this is this is a, a weekend where you can do whatever you want you want mm-hmm. to stay back at the the awesome uh, uh venue that Chuck and Amy lined up and and I think September helped line up that uh uh, play some switch on the TV while we go out and drink. Psh, do that. Do want to do karaoke? We're doing that. Yeah, there's yeah. no rules. Do whatever you want. I mean, there are some rules. Don't be running around naked in front of everybody or something. That's but... right. We one rule: keep it down at ten o'clock. Yeah. After ten o'clock, you got to keep it down. Yeah. Keep quiet got... down over there. We're old. Unlike last year, we'll have neighbors. <laughs> oh, really? Good. Okay. Good. Yeah, no neighbors last year because we were up in the uh, the mountains of uh, outside of Asheville, and it was. Uh, we had nobody could hear us for miles. Yeah. Well, and also I have a feeling that, um, you know, if you're new to the South, there are a few people there, Amy, Chuck, mm-hmm. 9 of 12, others, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who are going to get you covered on what to eat, what to do, how to eat it, yes. why it's oh, good, yes. all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So check it out. That's right. Got to um, get those weird walnut chocolate caramel patty things that... Uh, Savannah apparently is known for. I can't remember what they're called. But, uh, uh, those are... Oh, yeah, I know what those are. What yeah, are those called? They're like, they're like turtles, but they're not turtles. <sighs> they're like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> they are like turtles. All right, Brian, I want pra- you to try some... Pra- I'm sorry, pralines. Oh, right, pralines, duh. Pralines. I'm sorry, pralines. Yeah, but pra- no, there's, whatever those things are still called. It's the pralines, the caramel, the chocolate, and they're called something, but they're not turtles. They're... 
I'm sorry, pralines. Yeah, my <laughs> wife, my wife would have given me heat for that. She says they, they I claim it's the heat for that pralines. You know? Yeah, but I don't like. I like the way we say it, Brian. You and I. <laughs> Praline sounds really stupid, and I don't like to hear it. That's all I'm saying. I, you know, when I when I used to go to Baskin Robbins in the '80s, I miss Baskin Robbins. Mm. I just miss being going out and having ice cream. Mm. Um, we we called it pralines and cream uh, mistakenly because we're you know we're from Colorado. We don't know better. No, we're Yankees. I did too the whole time, and I even spent two years, a couple years in Mississippi, and I still said it wrong, and they all said it right, and I hated the way they said it. So I'm going to say pralines. Yeah. Take that! Take that, universe. I thought I, I thought I had one still in my in my bag from last year. Like one Ooh. of these that the hotel had a a bowl of them and said, "Oh yeah, grab these and take them up to your room. They're yummy. They're you know local thing here in Savannah." And um, uh, I grabbed two or three. Tina and I each had one, and I forgot I had a third one in my bag until just recently. I was getting this bag ready for another trip, and found it in there. Amy wants us to say pecan. I say pecan. Others say pecans. Pecan. Uh, I, I say pecan. I say pecan yeah. as pecan well. Pie. Yeah, pecan pie. Pecan pie. My wife made uh, pecan-based uh, granola, and um, I hate pecans. I'm not a fan unless they're like sugared up, and I'm kind of mm, off right, the sugar, so right. I don't eat those. Oh but when no, I like. I do like. Uh, um, you know, just a regular old pecan. Pecans, yeah, oh, but yeah. they're yeah. just so chalky and. I don't know that and walnuts. I can't do them. I don't know what the deal is. It's just not my nut. Mm -hmm. Those aren't those aren't nuts. I like putting in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> anyway, listen. I've been to, I've been to Vegas with you. I know. Yeah, you know what's um, up. No. Rainbow Bright says that uh, pecans make you have weird dreams. I believe that. There's something. Isn't there something to that? That there's some. Is that true? Weird chemical, not chemical, but weird thing in pecans that. Uh, uh -uh. <laughs> pecans <laughs> <laughs> well let's see this says here that uh dream not dream about okay 42 foods that make you dream according to the lucid dream society uh bananas so anything rich in tryptophan mm. vitamin b6 and serotonin will help you will will prompt dreaming and that's one of them pumpkin seeds uh chia seeds sesame seeds a lot yeah. of seeds flax seeds uh, cashew nuts almonds uh, dried frozen tofu. <laughs> That's very specific. Uh, what's tempeh? T e m p. Tempeh is that uh, is what vegans one of vegans uh, meat substitutes, kind of like tofu and. Got it. Not, 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 like, tofu is not really a meat substitute, but it's another soy based product that is kind of like um, that they use for grilling and stuff like that. I used to think I didn't like tofu until I had really good tofu once, and I changed my mind. Claire, Claire correction coming in three. Two, Two, one, one. fermented soybeans. <laughs> she says fermented soybeans. So wait, so the difference between that and uh, tofu, tofu is also soy based, I think, right? Yes, so it is. Just yeah. not and tempeh soy based. And what's the seitan is the other thing that is. Uh, Hail Satan. Call, yeah. Why would you call food Satan? Satan. Satan. Yeah. It's Satan. satanic. What have you eat? What do you eat on your plate? What could it be? <laughs> it's satanic. Is it supposed to look like meat? Because it doesn't. But what is it called? What's the name of that food that you've got there on your plate? Well, I just don't know. <laughs> oh, man. There was a time where that was everyone's favorite thing, and then and then everybody was sick of it. It was like it, we, we just turned on poor Danny Carvey so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah exactly. it was too good. He was too too flew too close to the sun. Yeah. Um, so Brian, pralines, I want, so oh, yeah, pralines are the things. Okay, I thought pralines were... A nut that you just got chocolate covered ones in uh, in Savannah, but it's it's the whole thing. I there, there was another thing with chocolate and caramel, and and pralines in it, and they were like turtles, but they were they were called something else, and I just can't figure it out. And pra praline slash pralines you make at us, they're not a they are a nut though, right? Or, or am I think what am I thinking of? Because I'm like you, I think it's like a you add well, a praline pecans. to things. Pecans, it's pecans and. Um, what are they like? Candied pecans or something? The pralines are. That must be it. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, um, you're right. Uh, it is. Oh, I'll bet this. Okay, I got a picture. I got a picture on the internet. Caramelized. So it's caramelized pecans. Are are. So it's those things, right? Yeah. Well, no, those are just those are just like praline clusters. How about down from that, the cookie-looking like things, just below that? Do you see that one? Um, um, I, I might be, I might be, 
just there's French Belgium be... versions of this that look like gophers. Little... They are gophers. Gophers. Jeez, Louise. Uh, gophers. Named after yeah. the uh, love boat character, right? <laughs> That's right. Yes, exactly. Fantastic. Gophers are your um, Georgia pecans covered in uh, caramel and chocolate. That's exactly what gophers are. What I'm thinking of. Okay. All right. I'm not. I'm not imagining things. And and now we can put that one to bed. Right? Yeah, we'll never have to think of that one again. No, I'm sure it won't exactly. become the new uh, carbonated meat or uh, bee color. <laughs> it won't because this, right? It's it's not Kate Walsh and it's not carbonated meat. This is a oh, new thing. We're it, all yeah, in. This is fi- uh, uh, figured it out and uh, and and resolved it. Good. I want you to try something on your phone real quick. This is something I discovered that I cannot believe is real. I saw uh, this. I don't even remember where I saw this, but apparently there is a hidden kill switch on your phone that you can speak to it and it will it will power it off. So imagine you're being you're kidnapped, Brian. You're being held in right, a, con- exactly. a ship container, yeah. and you're like, "Oh crap! I got to turn my phone off." Yeah. Or, or let's say, let's make it more realistic. I'm in Vegas. I happen to step off the strip to go to uh, uh, Terrible's Casino for some reason because I find out that they've got a steak and egg uh, special, yeah. the Cattleman special for three ninety nine. So I step off the strip and I start walking towards Terrible's, and a guy comes up behind me and says, "Give me your wallet and your phone." And I hand over my wallet and my phone. Yep. And then what do I do, Scott? All right, here's what you do. You say, you hold down the, the in, in the Apple's case, you hold down the Siri button, although I think this is just an Apple thing. Oh, shoot, why won't it? Hello. Oh, I know why. Hold on a second. Hello, Moto. Why won't this? Okay, there we go. Here's what you're going to say. So hold down your thing, and you say the phrase, at close range. That's it. <laughs> no way. So I'm going to really? say, at close range. Oh, that's not it. Did they close it already? <gasps> it worked for me the other day. Hold on. At okay. close range. Maybe it's marked for death. Okay. Only why I'm using the app. Maybe it's... um. What? <laughs> okay. It worked yesterday. Did they... Honestly, they may have turned it off because what it does is it says, just to confirm, you want to power off this device, and then you hit the power off button. And it worked hmm. for me yesterday. Literally just did it. I they may have closed this up because I think it's like, in all honesty, I think it's just like an internal developer thing where they're like, yeah, there's a yeah. phrase that works and nobody knew about it, and then somebody sure. found it. Um, but that's try try, try uh, under siege too. Try that one. See uh, if that if that does it. I don't think that'll do it. It'll no. it'll it'll want Mark me to for justice. Try that one. <laughs> that one will make it, that one will make me want to buy it on Apple TV or something. On deadly ground. All right, let me uh, try one. More fire time. down below. Try fire down below. At close range. <laughs> oh, there it is. It did it. Just to confirm, do you want to power off this device? I'm going to say no. Interesting. That's at close range. What Isn't that weird? weird? Isn't that weird? That's a weird. That's a weird phrase. I mean, I guess it's one that you're not going to say that often but uh yeah it's funky as hell it works on the i think it works on my watch too let me just try yeah but then you know again you want your phone on so that you can use find my phone and find your dude oh it's doing the same thing it's asking me if i want to shut everything down that's weird dude i think that's freaking weird it's not i mean it is faster to hold it might be faster to hold down the power button but why is it in here it's weird it's not really a kill switch right Plus, I think it would be kind of dumb for a, uh, a mugger to take your phone because, again, you've you've instantly got a way to track him. If you can get to another phone to call somebody who can track it, which maybe that's the problem is, you know, you they they can get to uh, some place where they can USB in and turn off your location stuff faster than well, especially if they had a because it's an eSIM now, so they'd have to. You, it's actually a benefit now. Yeah, you can't that pop up the SIM card. Yeah, yeah the, the robber can just go clink and run with it. Oh my gosh, I saw a video of a guy who was trying to sell. He was doing it on Facebook Marketplace. He was trying to sell his um, Vision uh, Apple Vision Pro. Uh-huh. And he had this guy who showed up to look at it. They met in some neutral place. Okay. And they, I, my first thought was the thought you always have of like, where is the camera being, where is this being filmed from? Is this being right. set up? Oh or yeah, right, exactly. Like, so first ooh. thought in my head, right? Because I don't yes, want to get, yes. I don't want to get duped, and I hate that. So I'm watching I, this, and this guy's got some kind of camera 
I don't know if it's his phone or something, but it's like super muffled and it's in his shirt. So it seemed more legit. Still possible he, he faked this. So I looked at that first and I thought, all right, I'll see what happens. This guy puts it on his head, kind of looks at it, takes it off, says, now how does this hook up? And he's got a cable connected because you have it connected to see how it works connected mm-hmm. to his phone. He takes that thing off and I've never seen anybody run so fast. He took the headset and just beelined it down the street. Really? Wow. Yeah. And the guy claims <laughs> it was real. Uh, so it's the best I could tell, but I just thought, man, yeah. you know, how again, I'd the be. question is, okay, so why it, it didn't look like um, uh, whatever whatever public place they were in, like their the security footage kind of thing. Mm-mm. It was just yeah. it was coming from the guy. So either the guy was like thinking ahead that you know you want to be safe and have a thing, or it's all made up, which seems likely because almost always it is. Mm-hmm. But I, mm-hmm. I will say, if you run into this video, I've never seen anybody run so fast in my entire life. <laughs> that that part you can't make up. Well, I mean, you probably could, you know, if you're really good, you could AI somebody running really fast and yeah. make it look believable, but probably not the probably case. Probably not. This guy, I mean, he moved like I've never seen a guy move. <laughs> um, but that's, a, yeah, the right thing to do is always assume it's made up and it'll, you'll have a better yeah. internet time if you do that. The uh, um, There's a channel that, a YouTube channel that I follow that has gotten, finally gotten back to putting videos back on. And it is called, it's something like, uh, it is 131216. I know, that, like, I'm going to go a channel that is 131216. Why am I doing that, Brian? That's, but trust me. That is weird. This guy puts up these great videos um, that he finds on YouTube and TikTok. And it's just like uh, a lot of security footage of people renting um, motorbikes, uh, mopeds and things like that. And the front wheel falls off as they're just leaving the... Uh, uh, just leaving the place. There's nothing, you don't see any videos of people getting maimed or um, anything, you know, horribly violent. Just but, uh, odd stuff. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, this yeah. is right up my alley, dude. I it love shit so like this. It is so great. This, this, and it's quick. It's like, you know, a five to 10 minute video every week. And uh, there's always something on there that has me laughing almost to the point where I'm peeing my pants. Yeah, it looks like he was posting crazily often back nine months ago and then suddenly stopped until like a week yep, ago. Yeah, and two he's weeks finally back to, back to doing it. So, all right. Yeah. I am now subscribed. I love crap like that. Yeah. The stupider, the better. I love it. <laughs> uh, speaking of the stupider, but better, we're going to get Dunaway <laughs> in here. That's terrible. That's a terrible thing to say. I don't know why I made that transition because he's not stupid at all. He's one of the smartest guys I know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we're also going to take the fourth caller in our uh, Discord. If you uh, ping me directly, you got to send me a DM, then I'll add you to the show. And we'll play a little bit of a game with our old pal Brian Dunaway. <laughs> hey, looky right here. We got Brian Dunaway ready to play. What's going on, man? What are you doing? Oh, hi, Scott and Brian. What am I doing? Well, I just ate a little bit of chicken salad with crackers. Mm. Mm, mm, yummy. Yum. Mm, that sounds all right. Mm, yeah. A little too much mayo for my taste, but you know. Yeah. You I, know what you need I, in there? It, it slid right down. You need lots of uh, pickles and you need lots of mustard in there. Those, those are your two mm. key ingredients for a good chicken salad type mm-hmm. thing. Crispy pickles, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Crispy pickles. And if you're not doing that, then forget it. You're doing it wrong. Right. That's what oh, happened yeah. one time when I stood too close to the stove <sighs> yeah. first. Oh, yeah. Crispy oh, crispy pick. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, no, no. I did do that when I was like uh, in the in the I think I was still like in the first grade. I was uh, I was we had like one of those. I, I'm old. And yeah. so we had one of those gas, those gas heaters, like in the in the hall next to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. And so I had come outside, and I was like, "Oh, it's so cold! I'm just going to stand in front of the thing here." And I leaned over because I dropped my towel and went to pick it back up, and I stuck my butt on the grill. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I've never done that. Yeah. That seems terrible. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I didn't go to school that day, but all I do is whine and cry do you still have a butt hurts. do you still have a little scar there a little uh sign i don't that know I, I can't see my butt well ask the next person who sees it you know yeah. pardon <laughs> me can ask you see me, my... ask me at the uh, southeast meetup right i'll tell you that's right that's right <laughs> what do you I think love look that. back there do you see it no it's right towards the crack <laughs> yeah if i don't hear how that goes by the end of october i'm going to be very upset <laughs> i want to know um all right we're going to add the fourth caller our fourth co- oh look who our fourth caller is it's uh i think we've had this person on before Although it's not ringing, why? Oh, there we go. Uh, hi, is Hello. this is this Judiper? Oh, yes. oh 
Juniper. Hello, Juniper. This is hey. not your first time to this rodeo, is it? I remember oh, we've done this, this before. Is this is my second time. Second, second time. time. Did you win the first time or uh, no? I don't know. I can't remember. It was too okay. long ago. <laughs> Are you playing an exceptional game? <laughs> I have no idea. All right. Well, happy to have you. No. Happy right. to have you. We're going to find out if you can uh, have the medal today to, to win this game that Brian will now describe to us in detail. Metal shop. That's right. It's time to play the Tadpooly Feud. I've surveyed the Tadpool on some nerdy topics, and Scott and Brian are going to have to predict the answers that they gave us. It is their job to see how many of those answers they can guess. Juniper, your job is more important than ever because you are going to be working with either Scott or Brian. If your team wins, you will get a prize package that includes Lego 2K Drive Awesome Edition. Oh, oh, that game's that great. Cool. That's actually a really fun game. It's good. Yeah. Cool. Well, and if that was enough, nice. how about Warhammer 40K Battle Sector? Ooh, wow, also good. Name brand what? games. It's like, yeah. like triple A titles here, or maybe double A titles. We yeah, don't want you to forget when you come on the third time whether you're one <laughs> or not. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's right. None of this. Maybe I won. Yeah. I don't know. You're I think double, be... double A is a good way of putting that uh, 40K game. It's really good, though. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Let's do it then. Uh, ex excellent. So there you go. That is uh, what you could win, but you haven't won it yet. To win it, you need to play. And to play, you guys need a question. So put your hands on your buzzers and please answer the following question. We asked 522 Tadpoolers, what's your favorite John Cusack movie? Scott. Uh, uh, gross point blank, please. Oh, that's is, a good is that, one. Is that your favorite, Scott? Oh, by, your favorite. by your far favorite? my favorite. Like by yeah. miles, not even close. Well, let's see if the tadpool agrees, though. Show me gross point blank. Yeah. Yeah, of course, it's number one. Should Come on be. now. It's gotta be. Where else are you going to see gross, Grocer get a TV on his head? Come on now. Grocer right. pointing in the blanks. Uh, right. What an amazing Grossy character. Grossy pointy blank. Most important, valuable thing that he, that actor ever made was the character Grossman. It's so good. Not Grossman, just yeah, Grosser. I keep saying Grossman. Yeah, <laughs> you should say Grossman. Um, Grossman. All right. Larry that, Grossman. That, so uh, that's the number one answer, Scott. So you've got Control the Board and you've got Judiper as a partner in crime. Um, what do you think, Judiper? You got one? Uh, so I have no idea who John Cusack is. Perfect. All I know is actor. <laughs> so that's... Uh -huh. yep. this, this is, is going to be great. Is not good one. Well, so. that's there all right. Were, there were 35 <laughs> people in the uh, survey who said something similar, or or I don't like John Cusack, or oh. I don't. Yeah. Um, yeah. What does that got to do? With However, anything? I looked at um, one thing that I can think of is Con Air. Oh, wow. Wow. well, I'll bet that's you Con Air's on here. Yeah, he's the he's the cop in that, right? Is he mm -hmm. the he's a good guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, it's arguable that whether Nick Cage is a good guy, but. Boy, I just saw. By the way, I just Put saw. The I money just, back in the box. <laughs> that mullet unless, is the good guy in that have, movie. Unless we have a better one, Scott. I don't know. Well, I'm torn. We I know a one. lot of '80s kids are going to say one that I have in my head, but I also think Con Air's on here, so I think we do it. Let's say Con Air. Okay, yeah, let's go. All right. Show me that hair dryer movie, Con Air. Number two. Mm -hmm. Jeez, mm -hmm. I didn't think it'd be that high. Nice, nice. Very, very um, popular. I like uh, Better mm -hmm. Off Dead, please. Could that be on there, please? Oh, that's a good one. It's got Booger in it. Sure. That's the one that's I've had booger. in my head. <laughs> Show me, I want my two dollars. Better Off Dead. Yeah, Jeez. right there on Franch number three. Can't believe we're going right down the list here. Um, right oh. down the list. Let's see if good you can point. Let's see keep this one up. <laughs> another, yeah, you're really uh, only up to six points. <laughs> <laughs> another 80s uh, hit. That I think that comes to mind is One Crazy Summer. It's where he was, I think it was, oh, a, he was a cartoonist. They had some weird art Forgot in that. that one. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. that. That's one. Uh, that, didn't that have Booger as well? Who was in the Godzilla costume for that one? <laughs> was that Booger? It might have been. <laughs> I Wait a minute. Chris been. Armstrong. I yeah. mixed those two movies up. I, I forget which one had Van Halen potato or oh, Burger. Oh, Bobcat Goldthwait. Thank you, Amy. Oh, That's really? Right. Look at that. Even Sick, she is able to uh, recall stuff like nobody's business. She's totally. awesome. Yeah. yeah. Hope all you right. feel better soon, Amy. Uh, all right, show me one crazy summer. Oh, no. what? Ooh, no. how is this Strike possible? One. All right, fine. Uh, where was that in the <laughs> list? Somebody, I'm sure, said that business. Um, number thirteen in the list was oh, uh, one crazy summer. It's a great yeah. movie. I mean, I can't believe that's a really that's a good one. That's a good one, Scott. That is a good I think one. That's good. It's an okay now, movie. Personally, yeah, I would just say anything. <laughs> to, uh, get on the board. Oh shit! And so I'm gonna, I'm that? gonna say anything. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, look at that. Uh, I gave him a pen. He gave me an answer. Show me, <laughs> say anything. Number five, and just like that, you're one point away from tying this cotton and juniper. Oh my gosh, um, that's insane! All right, what else you got? Oh, there's there's a couple of more modern ones I know that I I don't think people have liked as much. So I'm gonna say some of the, the classic stuff like mm -hmm. uh, it, sure. sixteen candles. Is he in it's that a great one because he's in yeah. that. He was like a little side. He was like one the first of first time um, I first time I ever saw him. I think was in Sixteen Candles. He was oh. one of Farmer Ted's uh, uh, entourage, his posse. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so he he helps guard the door when uh, Anthony Michael Hall is holding up a pair of panties. <laughs> Show me Sixteen <laughs> Candles. Ooh, number yeah. nine. Jeez. Big oh. points on that one. Big oh. points. I don't like that. Now, I remember this one because. Uh, I told you guys I watched um, uh, uh, Sleepwalkers, and it's not related. He's not in that. But right. when I was going through the movies, Audra demanded that I get a better set of movies. So I went through my DVDs <laughs> and picked out stuff that I thought she might like. Mm. Uh -huh. um, so I pulled out the DVD for Must Love Dogs. Is there fans out there for that? I know she loves it. What sure. do you people think? Do it. Give it. So Uma Thurman and uh, Janine Garofalo and John Cusack and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a like a dating uh, thing, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, about dogs, uh, let's say dating that. dogs. That's yeah. right. Dating dogs. Uh, you show me. Seen it. Okay. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> Bombi is Bombi is saying no. That's something else. I think I'm confusing with another film. Anyway, you're saying must love dogs. Uh, here is oh that that's the truth about cats and dogs. That's right. <laughs> which, that's great. Which did, which did not have John Cusack in it. Show me must love dogs. Oh, oh that's a shame. Yeah. Um, oh, must, shut up, Scott, uh, with that insincere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, One shame, person said shame. must love dogs down at uh, tied for number 23. Okay, now, Juniper, I know another one that's more modern, maybe 20, 25 years ago, something like that. It's not really modern, but not 80s. Um, that probably is on here. I'm a little worried that it's like fourth, so it won't give us tons of points. But I like high fidelity, so can we get oh, high fidelity in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just like uh, Jack says, you your daughter does not want a copy of I Just Called to Say I Love You. Show me high fidelity. Damn it. Number four, just like you predicted. That's all right. Puts you uh, just four shy of tying uh, Brian with his two answers. Okay. That he <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> yeah. um, Great book, by the way. It's, it's one of the, um, oh, that British author who did About a Boy and Fever Pitch. And his name is. I didn't know it was based his on name a book. Is... Uh, shoot! Cool. Somebody, somebody, give me the the, the, the cat's name that wrote the, all those books. Um, is it a literal the, cat? Not a boy. Yeah, thank you, Doctor Calhoun. It's not William Shakespeare. All right, <laughs> William somebody Shakespeare. Else. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we're getting in the weeds a little, because. Oh, what else is? There? I mean, there's other stuff. I'm not going to lie. I keep thinking of stuff, and I keep thinking. Every time I think I got one, I'm like, no, that was Matthew Broderick. Um, okay, there was... What's the one? Oh, shit. Hold on a second. There's one where he's in... Uh, it's like it's like a reference to Stephen King. Or maybe it is a Stephen King thing, and he's with Samuel L. Jackson's in it. I can't think of the name of it, and if I can't, then probably it's not on here. Oh, I know. We did a film I sack know. of one. Um, uh, oh, what's the disaster movie that's a year? Oh, no. 2012. Yeah. 2012. Nice. 2012. Good call. That's it. 2012. Thank you, Jennifer. By the way, Nick, Nick Hornby. Thank you, Chuck. Nick Hornby is the author of uh, all those books I mentioned. Awesome stuff. All right. Show me 2012 with his uh, uh, high-jumping uh, limousine. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Number okay. seven. Oh God, nice. What? Oh, Woody okay. Harrelson was a crazy a guy. It's the... been a while since I've seen that movie. Very I long time, yeah. 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 I mean, last time yeah. I saw it was Film Sack, and before that, I think it launched, and then I just forgot what year it was supposed to be. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. Am I just He's remembering a more badass Luke? limousine driver than, uh, than, than <laughs> Logan? Was. It's pretty funny, though, Brian, because I am pretty good at knowing movie years. And I couldn't yes. think of the name of great. the year. Right. I know. <laughs> the name is... of the year. Yeah. Oh, that's funny. All right. Did it come uh, out in 2010? Can you? What? No, it came out in 2012, I think. Didn't it? Okay. okay. I'm pretty it came sure. Out in 2011. 
Did it? I'm gonna say it, it well, makes it sense to be the year, year be- before. I think it came out the year before because we were like, oh, 2012. Oh, oh that so camping scary. Harold camping predicted it was gonna be the end of the world or something. Because it's funny, I can name, I could say, uh, Blade Runner 2049 came the- out in 2017. Like I know that. I don't know why. I yeah. can't think of this one. But anyway, was um, it the Aztec me- calendar ending oh, that we had even with- earlier? 2009, by the way, is what? When, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Stephanie and Pets. Well, uh, they had 2000- to make it. They had to make it to rental market. They couldn't just, you know. Well, I don't. Right. I have no problem with that. I just think that sounds insane. Like I can't believe that was that much earlier because I don't. I thought I saw it in yeah. 2012. Anyway, uh, all right. The power of suggestion. Um, I can't even think of other movies. Um, the one with Samuel L. Jackson. I can't think of the name of, which means probably nobody got it. I'm guessing. Uh, oh, Black Snake Moan. Shit. <laughs> Three answers left on the board. Right now, the score is 17 for Scott um, and uh, 14 for Brian. And 17 for Scott and Juniper. I can't yeah. believe Ambassador you. Domo said being John Malkovich. Oh, mm. oh yeah. Oh, that's Wait. a good one. I forgot about it. Yeah, duh. He's in that? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I always forget He's... everyone except John Malkovich in that. That is hilarious. <laughs> um, all right. You know what? Let's do it. Being John Malkovich. Okay. All right. That's a good one. Let's see if it's in there. Malkovich, 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 Malkovich. Yep. Show me being John Malkovich. Ooh. There you go. Number eight. Good job. Um, that may lock it up, right? Is that? Mm, no? I love the scene in being John Malkovich where um, John Malkovich is reading this letter to John Cusack and he goes, my daddy is coming home on June 7th. I'm going to finally get to meet my daddy on June 7th. Oh, wait, am I thinking of something Make else? on air. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> That's an, You're making that's me awesome. laugh. You did it. Um, all right, hold on then. Let's go. Let's go with if that made it in there. That hot tub movie did. Um, <laughs> hot, uh, what? Uh, hot, time in the hot tub movie? Time travelers. Hot, hot tub, tub time, time travelers. Yes, oh, t- time it. machine. Hot time tub. machine. Hot tub time machine. That's it. Hot tub time machine. Show me hot tub time machine. Oh, hot yeah. tub Tardis. He was you in, nailed it. He was in one, but not in two, right? I like never the, saw either, one so of I'm the, not sure. One of the major guys was in one, but Wasn't not in three? two, and I think. Oh, God, was there a third one? Uh, I, I can tell you this. Uh, I don't know, but that sounds like a horrible movie. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Hey. I can tell you that um, gotta, I don't we know gotta. how well it adheres to the laws of time travel because I, I never know. wanted to see those stupid-ass movies. Mm. <laughs> Look, it's actually really good. I like the first one Are they, a lot. Good? The second one, and eh, not as good. But all I got to say is we got a winner regardless. Yeah, that's true. If I, yeah. if I get yeah. 10, you get 10. Doesn't matter. Cleared the board. I'm shocked that we yeah. cleared the Cusack right. board. That's um, true. Yeah, Scott's got 31. Brian's got 14. But doesn't matter because Juniper's getting those games. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to just, I want to try one that's kind of out from left field and it's a bad movie. I, don't, I actually don't like this movie. Okay. But The Grifters, I remember oh. being excited because oh. he was in it. I don't think What's that movie's very good. What's bad about that movie? It's fantastic. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't like it. I can't remember oh why. Oh, my gosh. I remember it's really so disliking Melanie, it. Melanie, or not Melanie, uh, not Melanie Griffith, um, Warren Beatty's wife, oh, Annette Benning. Annette Benning's in it, She's yeah. fantastic in it. Angelica Houston's his mom. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, don't. Ooh, maybe you need a rewatch of the Grifters. I, I might need it's, to. You know what it is? It's 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 disturbing. Is the problem with Grifters? It's one of those uneasy films, and it yeah. makes you feel. Like, and I like uneasy yeah. films, so maybe I didn't in 1989 or 90 or whatever it was. Maybe yeah. wasn't Stephen Toblowski in that? I do like him. <laughs> that I don't remember. I remember your three principles, and I just remember it was. Well, I I sure as heck fire remember him. Get it? That's the right. You get the reference. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, very good. All right, show me the Grifters. Boom. Number number twenty two in the list. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of people need to see the Grifters. I'm gonna watch it again and make it a recommendal someday. Yeah, maybe I need to see it again. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's streaming on Paramount Plus. I could do that. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, what else you got I'm, there, Dunaway? Oh, so I'm gonna go with the movie that um, every time we watch it, my significant other forgets that we've watched it, and she <laughs> always gets really excited in the beginning of the movie. And then she's like, oh, stupid movie. Mm. Identity, which I love, Mm. is a great movie. Oh, that's a good I love that movie, too. And I think, yeah, yeah, it's... um it's nice and twisty, and the twist mm-hmm. doesn't come at the end. The twist comes halfway through. Got Ray Liotta in there. All the way through. Got Ray Liotta. I love him. Bunch of yeah, other people. Yeah, it's got that dude. Remember that dude who was on Heroes for one hot minute who could look at the camera and make his eye go... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pru- uh, back and forth. Yeah, it's the Pruitt Taylor <laughs> uh, something. Yeah, something. He's in all sorts wow. of stuff, like Justified. Does Heroes and- hold up? 
Does he, that? No. Season one does. The rest okay. of it's terrible. Okay, okay. Yeah, no, one I, of the, God, when that came season, out. Hero season two didn't even hold up as it was airing. Yeah. The problem is it <laughs> landed the right. Save save the world. It landed right That's as right. they were doing a writer strike, and they really took a hit on that. It was bad. It really hurt heroes, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Uh, well, let's see. Identity. Yeah. Oh, weird. Look at that. That's, that's a new thing that Alcalab added. That is number 11. You don't yeah. get uh, any points for it, but you do get uh, the ding and you get another turn. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's funny. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's yeah. great. I, I, that's at cool. first, I thought something Perfect. glitching out, but this is the thing you were yeah. talking about. That's right. something I was talking about. So it even says it down on the bottom what number 11 was. By the way, it was tied for 11th place with 11 points with Serendipity, which, uh, oh. even though it rhymes, uh, oddly enough, does not have the same plot line as Identity. The two are very, um, yeah. Very, oh, my gosh. Uh, I didn't know this. Yeah. Okay, so Identity came out in 2003. That's a James Mangold joint. Um, oh, is it really? Yeah, I didn't know that either. And no wonder we all oh. liked it. Ray Liotta, Amanda Peet, John Hawks is amazing. Alfred yeah. Molina with his all his arms. Oh, wait, that's Doc Ock. Never mind. Uh, John C. McGinley. Oh, man, this oh. cat. Jake Jake Busey. Rebecca De Mornay. What? Wow. <laughs> Anyway, wow! I should... <laughs> yeah, we need to. That would be a film sack, a, a perfect film sack movie. We should do it. Let's get it on the list, yeah. Randy, if you're listening. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, uh, Randy's Ryan, always still... listening. He's always there. Oh, always listening. Um, <laughs> uh, still, uh, still your I turn. Think Glenn. You, I think you gave one away because you said Serendipity was was not in the. Top. No, I said Serendipity was tied for 11th place with Identity. Oh. That's why you see both of them on the bottom of the. the oh, okay. There. Well, I'm not looking at the screen, so that makes sense. Oh, well, there you go. Um, yeah. Apologies. Um, so I'm going to go with um, probably my favorite one, uh, Runaway Jury. I oh, like that one, well, too. Oh, yeah, Grisham joined. Very, right? yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's very he's very slimy in that one. Mm. Sure, sure. I like slime. All right. Show me Runaway Jury. Runaway oh. Jury. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, man. What Maybe else is coming. There? Run away, Jerry. Uh, that was number 17 on the list, by the way. Okay. That means we are in the dregs here. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How no, about... Last, last strike for either one of you. And uh, still one answer on the board. And, and and lots more John Cusack movies that you haven't even thought of. Okay. How about... Um... Oh, someone in the chat said it. Since we've already won, I'm just going to go back and look. How about there it is, pushing tin. Oh, oh pushing good. tin! Yeah. I forgot about yeah. the end of that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, the Billy Air- Bob Thornton. Yeah, I like that and movie your, a lot. And your naked Angelina Jolie. Show me pushing tin. Really? Wait, was she in that? Really? Yeah, she was. was Oh, I thought. Again, oh, you're again, right. Unless I'm thinking of a different movie. No, nope, you're totally right. I was thinking it was Kate Blanchett, but she never does nudes, so oh, that's why I was confused. Yeah. All right, no, uh, you're pushing totally to right. number twenty-one in the list. Uh, right there. I don't remember much except air traffic control or something. Right. Mm-hmm. That yep. was the deal. And then yep. something bad happens. <laughs> yep. And then John C. Delancey crashes a plane, and while he's thinking of uh, Jessica Jones, <laughs> and a stuffed animal lands in a swimming pool. If I yeah. remember correctly. Yeah. No, that's exactly the be, plot. You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. I might. I might be thinking of something else. I don't know. But mm. uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm. I love that. That whole season was great. Uh, all right. <laughs> Who's turn? Wait, do we have a buzzer left? We do. Bri, Bri. You do. We yeah, do. Brian we has do. one guess left. One and I'm on racking board, one my brain left. because I know he's done some voices in animation, but I can't think of what they are because I keep getting them confused once again with Matthew Broderick. I don't know mm. why, but I mm. do. Um, man. Uh, mm-hmm. Shoot. I don't know if I can think of anything else John Cusack mm-hmm. has been in. Been on some TV stuff. Oh my God! I don't know. I'm out of numbers here. Let's yeah. see. Um, you're probably you're probably heading down a good a good uh, path right there. Is what you're. What, what was I? What was I? Good, what was? What did I say? What, did I say? what path right. were you oh, on? That he's, that he's done a little uh, voice work in animated films. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. Um, but you couldn't think of any, so you know it's a no. path with a dead end apparently for you. Exactly. But, uh, so I I believe he was um, he was. Uh, he was uh, the, the Hulk in the animated feature. I don't know. <laughs> wow, wow. I mean, he'd make a good. He'd make a good Fern Bruce Gully? Banner. Was he in Fern Gully? Why does it feel like he was in Fern Gully? That can't be right. No, he definitely wasn't in Fern Gully. You know what? It feels you're, like that era. You're right. It is. The, it's totally that era. The one you're thinking. I think it's probably the one Brian's thinking. I don't actually know right, for sure, right. but I think I it's know. one. Fern yeah. Gully. 
Say Fern Gully. Okay. Let's say Fern Gully. Uh, show me Fern Gully. Come on, Larry. <laughs> wow. Like I clicked that a minute ago. It's yeah. Uh, Scott, what what do you think it is? Uh, I think it's that Anastasia deal. Oh, exactly Anastasia. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Don't I don't remember. Think, oh, I don't remember who he Williams played, home, right? but that was, was on a Rob lot. Williamson? No, no, no. You're thinking of Ferngully. He was just Rob did Williams. Ferngully. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Make Ryan, John Cusack, Kelsey Grammer, Christopher, Christopher Lloyd, and <laughs> Kazaria, Bernadette right. Peters, Kirsten Dunstan, Angela Lansbury. You guys, you know what's great about that? Christopher Lloyd played Rasputin. Of all <gasps> oh, people. Anastasia was the one? Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah Anastasia was the one. That yeah. was the one. Christopher Lloyd was Rasputin. Think about that for a minute. How amazing that is. It was yeah, incredible. That was, um, that was a that was a Don Bluth joint before he quit That's making right. features. Yeah, I think it may have been close to the last one he did. Anyway, wow. Well, there you go. Well, there's all ten answers. Um, let's go down some uh, that you didn't get to. I mentioned Identity and Serendipity being tied for eleventh. Fourteen oh eight. The other movie that is an, uh, a year title oh. that John Cusack starred in. <laughs> what year did that come out? Fourteen oh six. It came out fourteen oh six. Yeah, it had to okay. come out. Two years I thought before. that was a it was a room number. Not a year, right? It was, it was, it was a, a room number, oh, okay. yes, but it was another little four-digit. I thought deal. I got all that mixed up. I'm like, wait, what movie did I see? Was this a period piece no, no, with no. him and Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> a period piece from the 1400s. Uh, he was in a baseball movie called Eight Men Out. Uh, oh, yeah. he, was in, uh, he was the nice nice older brother in uh, Stand By Me. Uh Thin Red Line, America's Sweethearts. Yeah, Avoid that one. That it's horrible. One was Everybody was in Thin Red Line. God, there was so many cameos. Love in that, that movie. movie. Such a good movie. Uh, Breakfast Club. Nope. Somebody. Uh, nope. Not paying attention. Uh, Dirty Dancing. Nope. Guess <laughs> again. Fer Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Nope. Sorry. Uh, then we get a bunch of, I don't have one. I don't like John Cusack. I have no idea who that is. I'm too young, and I've never seen one of his movies. Those am... all in one row, by the way, because of the way you sort of. <laughs> I'm kind of um, glad I got Scott on this. Yeah, <laughs> are you? Nailed it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Juniper, are you I one of the people that? But still, <laughs> were you one of the people that voted? I'm too young for knowing who that is, or whatever. Do you know if you voted in this yeah, one? Yeah, I didn't think I voted, but yeah, I do think I'm. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Idaho <laughs> Igor, uh, inside John Cusack. Now Someone's Igor. Close. Inside uh, John jury, Cusack. <laughs> jury duty. I'm pretty sure they were thinking of runaway jury. Less than zero. I don't think he was in that. Love and Mercy. That was a good one. It was the Beach Boys thing, and he played Brian Wilson. It was mm. very, very good. Mm. Uh, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, look at you playing into playing into Scott's pockets. Martian <laughs> Child. Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. Uh, oh. My Blue Heaven. I don't think he was in that. Was, but it's he such wasn't a great in My movie. Blue Heaven. We just watched that the other night. That yeah. was the other movie that yeah. broke Audra between the Sleepwalkers really? and the My oh, Blue I Heaven would, double I feature. I would watch that movie any day of the week. I love My Blue Heaven. Well, we had been watching. We've been watching Only Murders in the Building, uh, and so I was like, "Oh, it's I got an old Steve Martin film uh, on DVD. Want to watch that? Yeah, sure." And I did not fly. Well, really? Wow. Well, yeah. Arugula. It's a vegetable. Arugula. Arugula. <laughs> uh, School of Rock. Again, I think somebody's thinking of High Fidelity. Tapeheads. Another underappreciated uh, John Cusack movie with Tim Robbins, and they are a couple of music producers who make it big with Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. It is fantastic. <laughs> Tape. Don't don't sleep on Tapeheads. Um, uh, the Adams Family. I uh, don't remember that. The Contract. The Factory. The Journey of Natty Gann. The Raven. There you go. The Sure Thing. One person said it. True Colors. War Inc. And then somebody just simply said, "You know the one." Oh, you know the one. <laughs> what? War Inc. Those people meant gross point War blank. Inc. I'm convinced. War Inc. was kind of the the <laughs> unofficial pseudo sequel to Oh uh, War. Gross point Do blank. Oh, even though, oh. Really, even though oh, it really gosh. wasn't a sequel, there are people who say, "Isn't that the thing?" It's like a mm. it's like a similar because he's a hidden man that is. I don't remember that movie. Yeah, no, I no. I, well, I don't know. I don't remember it. I remember seeing. So the one it makes me always think of is Lord of War, and I know it's not the same. That's what I was thinking too. Like, so I, maybe I they're the maybe they have similar plots or something. I always assume that, but... they have similar titles. Scott really is the really the. Only yeah, that's thing. all it is. <laughs> Wasn't the disaster film 2012 yeah. set in 2009? I, <laughs> that is, that is the so same as 2020. What is, is that so movie? so effed the up in rock. my head? Uh, well, that's great because that means Juniper won. Spiritual, I'm sorry, a spiritual cousin to Gross Point Blank is how a it's spiritual described. A spiritual <laughs> cousin? <laughs> I have never spirit, heard that. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. All right. Well, you get one of these, dude. The congratulations. You get a congratulations because you won. It doesn't matter how you won. You won. That's all that matters. So these codes are coming to you via uh, Brian over there. He'll send these to you directly in the DM. And uh, it was good having you back on. How do you feel about your big win? 
Uh, pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Good I'm not going to forget this time around, are you? No, yeah, sir. that's right. You're, you're going to your grave <laughs> at this one. Uh, have a fantastic week. Brian, hey, guess what? You and I are getting together later this week, uh, one thirty Mountain Time on Friday, to play a little uh, yeah. uh, uh, old-ass video games. Tell people what we're doing. Yeah. We're going to the arcade. Yeah, we're- we're gonna yeah we're gonna put our cowboy hats on and we're gonna go do some sunset riders never played this back in the day arcade classic from the early 90s from konami uh after those successful four-player turtles beat-em-ups mm-hmm. why not go to the wild wild west and do some offensive things with some native americans yeah why not uh, why not indeed it's a fantastic it's a very small game. part of the game it is but, but it's, it's hilarious it's such a good game though it's so fun yeah uh, yeah. So we're we're gonna we're gonna be doing that. I've been playing that on my SP unit all week. Your SP unit, right? yeah. Yep. I like playing Spunit. stuff there. You just shorten it to spewn it. Yeah, <laughs> spewn it. And uh, I highly recommend checking that yeah. out again if you haven't in a long time. It's also very colorful. It's a weird game set in the West that's just full of color. Yeah, and there's a follow up that I did not connect until someone pointed out. Um, do you remember uh, what is it? The the Cowboys from Moo Mesa, I believe it is that early '90s cartoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there was a, a, a somewhat of a spiritual successor that, that came out <laughs> based on on this. It was a cousin successor. This, this, uh, uh, spiritual, spiritual listen, cousin. I'm on the I'm on the War Inc. page right now on Wikipedia. War Inc. <laughs> is not to be an informal sequel to the 1997 film Gross Point Blank. Both films are similar in style and theme. Both films star John Cusack as an assassin and Joan Cusack as his assistant with Dan Aykroyd in a supporting role. In an interview, Joan Cusack said, I think in a way War Inc. was a Gross Point Blank too. John Cusack Joan described John, it as oh. a spiritual cousin to Gross Point Blank. That's oh, wild. So he nailed it. He nice uh, that's yes, absolutely crazy i've yeah. never seen it now i need to i have to now see it to, now. especially knowing that it's got accurate in it yeah. yeah did it review well let's see uh oh not great generally <laughs> negative reviews from critics 30 <laughs> percent. yeah it's not not good but maybe still yeah. i may still want to see it just to feel it you know just to have the experience yeah, inside exactly. you yes yeah it feels because yeah. it's uh, that gross point blank is like one yeah. of my all-time this, favorites. This might, you know, maybe you don't want to see this to just kind of not not have that negative attachment. Negative. Is there anything gross in Gross Point Blank? No, I mean, not spelled the way it is. G R O S S E. Gross with an E, like point with an E, and yeah. blank without an E. Yeah, yeah, Brian, come on now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Brian, you, I'll see you then. And uh, in the meantime, I would like you to kiss our butts. Oh no, you. Bye. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back from said break, we will spend some time with Tom Merritt, look at the latest tech headlines, as well as some recommendals with Randy after that. Nicole's got an appointment this morning, but Brian's got two recommendals. What? I'm making up for it. Yeah, I'm making up for it is what I'm doing. Um, That's what I'm doing. Hey, let's look at a band called Moon Kissed. These guys. All right. These guys put out some really, really cool singles. Um, Irresistible swooping hooks with messages about consent, existential anxiety, and gender, gender, gender identity. Mm. Uh, Those those two movies, by the way, are also tied for 11th place. (laughs) Gender and identity. Um, This is a New York City-based trio. They're Mooncast. They've got a brand new album called I'll See You in New York, which comes out later this month, September 20th. This is the uh, third single from the album. The first two are Cycles and 101. This is the third single. It's called... Do you miss me yet? It's great. This is really, really good. Here are uh, here is the band Moon Kissed and Do You Miss Me Yet? I'd like me a splash of whiskey to wash the trail dust off in my gullet and keep my singing voice in fiddle. If you want to have fun with Billy Bob Teeth, and I know you do, that's why you bought this video. And we've returned. Brian, who was that again, please? Sure. That is the band Moon Kiss. They've got a brand new album coming out later this month. That's the third single from it. It's called Do You Miss Me Yet? Hmm. Chat says, Cole Cast in the chat says, Gross Point has five different towns. Yeah, but Gross Point wasn't the town. It was the high school. Gross Point High School, right? Right. Do I have right. that right? I mean, it may have been also a town, but uh, Gross Point was the was the high school. that's right. Yeah. yeah. And that was the, the reason I think it hit so hard with me is partly musically but also it was this marriage of like hey what if john hughes and and tarantino had a baby yeah and also it's the exact it was my 10-year graduation anniversary as it was the characters and it just felt like it was made for us i don't know i can't explain it i love that movie so much 
Uh, okay. I, 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 I'm sure I told you who I saw that movie with. Um, Did just you? Recently. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, I'll put in the... Uh, I'll put it right there. Oh, can I put it? And I can't. Oh, don't tell me I can't put it in the thing. Can I not put it in the thing? Oh, what's, there we go. What's the thing? the thing? Is there a thing? Oh. In our Discord chat. Oh, nice. I didn't know you went. And, uh, maybe you did mention this. There was like a. Re, I think I um, did. Yeah, we went and saw Gross Point Blank with John Kuzak. Uh, that's who right. did a Q and A session afterwards and talked about his uh, his favorite stuff. Please tell me he spent uh, twenty minutes talking about a television on Dan Aykroyd's head. Please tell me that. He did not. I'm sorry. I, wish, I wish I could say he did. Yeah. That's a shame yeah. because it's really a high point there. You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. We got uh, Tom coming in. And uh, let's see if we can get that going here. Uh, learn some tech in our lives. Nothing wrong with yeah. that. Let's see if I can find uh, his, his thing here. We want Tom. We want Tom. We do want Tom. And we want Tom now. Oh, he's got a little tiny head at the bottom of the screen. Stand up. Stand up, Tom. <laughs> I like it. I like this little corner head. It's fun. It's cute. Uh, hi there, everybody. Hi, I'm Tom Merritt. Uh, yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me lower it. <laughs> no worries. And, uh, yeah, it just it uh, it grabbed the wrong camera. Can you tell so. me what those large tomes are behind you when you're done? I'm very curious about those giant books. I don't know what they are. I can't read them. Well, crap. I'm just going to do this. Thing. Yeah, that'll work. Um, <laughs> Discord just doesn't want to see my uh, my real camera. Uh, which which tomes? The two, two big, big books behind. Ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right that, there that's the uh, the uh, compact edition of the Oxford English Dictionary. Oh, look at you! Oh, wow. You're so fancy, yeah. dude. Gosh that's dang funny. it! Isn't that available on the internet? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, sure, Ibit. But does it come with a magnifying glass? <laughs> yes, oh, it does. My gosh. Called. It's called command plus sign. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. No, good point. Yeah, I guess we do have a we do have a method for zooming these days. Yeah, but it doesn't sit on the desk behind you as nicely, does it? No, it doesn't. That looks great. In fact, I'm not surprised at all. Of course, you have that, and I think that's great because Tom Merritt is one of our favorite intellectual, tech-minded guests. He comes on Wednesdays, talks about the tech news of the day, and that's him. He's the guy. His camera's a little weird, but we don't care. Tom Merritt, what are we doing today? What are we watching for? Oh my goodness! It's uh, IFA, IFA, the uh, the big tech conference in Berlin, uh, Germany. Is <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. FIFA and IFA are two different things. Uh, that is a very good you. point. Uh, yeah, and it uh, it is uh, it's all chips and laptops and and fun for everyone right now. So uh, Intel is rolling out its second gen core ultra processors, the 200V series. Those are going to be going into a bunch of laptops uh, that will be powering Copilot, Microsoft's uh, AI on Windows. Uh, and Qualcomm is announcing its first eight core Snapdragon X Plus chips. Those are slightly less powered than the Snapdragon X Elite chips, which are already in laptops, which means they're a little bit cheaper. So for instance, you can get a Dell Inspiron 14 for $899 instead of $999. Uh, they have about half the graphics power by all accounts. So mm -hmm. these are not things you're gonna be playing games on, but if you don't care about that, you just want a cheap laptop, cheap laptop mm. uh, for productivity they will have the specs on the neural processing unit to do all of the ai processing and things like adobe and and all of that so uh you know they're they're not underpowered they're just not gaming uh focused kind of stuff mm, a little bit like apple silicon it's interesting because uh i feel like there's a wave now of i don't know what intel does with this information overall but there's this wave of comp competitors hitting the the arm-based uh chip world pretty hard and doing pretty good, right? Like, yeah, they're, they're impressive. Uh, the new the new um, surfaces are pretty impressive. Uh, the Mac stuff with the M ones through fours have been very impressive, and they I feel like they're eating their lunch a little bit. Are we worried about Intel? Are we worried that they're that they've got uh, you know a life a shelf life uh, after all after all these many decades yes. of dominance? <laughs> yes, a lot of people are very worried about Intel. Uh, the 200V is not an ARM series chip. 
It's it's an oh. x86 chip. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but it it's the Lunar Lake chip, if you heard them talking about that. But it's meant to compete on the battery efficiency level with the ARM chips. So uh, Intel says that it's a uh, big uh, battery life uh, advantage over the Qualcomm uh, Elite, that it, it, it's more power efficient. It kind of depends on what you're talking about, but mostly that's true in, in most situations. Apparently, Microsoft Teams is more efficient on the ARM for some reason, mm. but but you know, office productivity and stuff is, is generally going to be more efficient on the 200V. The problem is Intel uh, is, is not doing well with its manufacturing right now. Uh, in fact, Reuters says the next gen manufacturing process that it wants to roll out next year uh isn't up to snuff they they tried to make some broadcom chips and broadcom came back and said yeah this isn't ready for high volume production intel says don't worry it'll be ready for high volume production by next year when it's supposed to be rolled out uh there's also recent chips that had some voltage issues and intel had to do a recall on a large number of their chips uh so yeah people are very worried about intel uh so this this 200v series announcement is an important one and how these uh, bu- uh, like Samsung Book 4 Edge and Asus ZenBook S- S16 uh, compared to it uh, are going to be really important. So it, it's, you know, what what we think about the laptops that have the 200V uh, is, is going to be important to Intel. It's not, it's not the make or break, but they need a win here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels like they've been a little bit without one. So, so let me ask you this though: Will these pair well? Will these chips pair well, as best we know, with with a good GPU? So, if people are like, "Well, my next gen gaming computer, I want one of those chips, and I'll pair it with a 4080." And now no, I've got the these best are of both mobile worlds. chips. These are meant to be in your laptop, so they just right. come with whatever GPU is integrated with them, and they they have a decent GPU. That's one of the 200V's big advantages: is its GPU is is sixty uh, percent better frame rate than the top shelf Qualcomm GPU that comes with the Snapdragon, uh, and is a sixteen percent better frame rate than the AMD HX three seventy. Mm. Uh, so. Again, if you're really serious about gaming, you're not going for these at all. But if it's like, well, you know, I want something light, thin, easy to carry around, but I can do some gaming, uh, these are good. Whereas the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite has gotten poor reviews for gaming. Mm -hmm. You know, somewhere around 50% of the games don't run well uh, on it. Uh, So... So that's that's a big issue for Qualcomm, and it's something where Intel can press its advantage, I think. Yeah, interesting. Well, we'll see what happens. I didn't know. You know, if you'd have asked me 10 years ago if there would be like a another sort of chip uh, gold rush in the next 10 years yeah. of, of this level, I wouldn't have... I would have said ah, right that doesn't sound right. Yeah. It seems like I we're was just... like, oh, chips are commodities now. They're yeah. just going to be, you know, faded to the background. Yeah, but mostly driven by what? Probably AI is the chief pusher here, right? Like just yeah, it's well, it's the efficiency of ARM. Uh, you know, Apple leading the way, but not the only one who's been after this idea of like, well, what if we can run an entire operating system in the ARM instruction set? That's going to be a lot more efficient. So making that work has been a huge leap, uh, and. The AI stuff, right, and, and the neural processing unit, which is a new element of the chip uh, that can power a lot of things on device, so you're not having to go to the cloud for it, and it makes it faster. Yep. Well, we'll see how this goes for them, hopefully well. Uh, if you're looking for good coverage of this sort of stuff, of course, it's all over the Daily Tech News show, and I'll be on there today. Oh, how's your power? Did every- I guess everything came back. Is here you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, w- I had to do the show uh, off of my EcoFlow battery portable unit, uh, sitting there, I had it sitting there on the floor. Uh, had just enough plugged into it, including the cable modem, uh, to to make the show work. So if you look at yesterday's video from Good Day Internet on YouTube, uh, you'll see a little di- different perspective, and you get a different perspective today with the different camera. I imagine that's why <laughs> yeah. Discord isn't seeing my regular camera because I had to disconnect all of that stuff uh, yesterday and, and go from the, uh, the battery backup. So, so maybe I just need to reboot discord. Yeah. Well, today will be normal because power's back and, uh, we'll all be on knock today. on wood. Yeah. <laughs> knock on that wood, everybody. Uh, that'll be later today. Of course, 2 PM mountain time. Make sure to check that out. Tom Merritt, is there anything else going on that you would like to mention? 
Yeah, tomsnewbook.com. Go check it out. Uh, get synced funded. We're almost there. Uh, so if any of you are like, oh, right, I've been meaning to, to sign up for that, or I've been meaning to talk my workplace into, into backing it at a corporate level, uh, go check it out. It's all at tomsnewbook.com. Please do. Tom Merritt, everybody. He is always on the socials at Ace Detect. Find him there. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye. 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 Ever. Bye. Ever. Bye. Bye. Uh, all right. That work. <laughs> oh, yeah, it did kick him. Okay, good. I mean, not that it's good to kick him, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. All right. Randy, incoming like a bullet, like a like a like a spear chucked by somebody, you know? That's right. Oh. oh. Uh, let's see if I can get all this straight. Gosh dang it, it's not where I need it. Okay, it's time for this. Well, what do you recommend? Time for recommendals. It's where we talk about streaming services, something we watched on one of them, and recommend to you find folks at home. In this case, one of us has two dose 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 decaecus. Anyway, <laughs> that's right. Uh, speaking of the most interesting man alive, or however that old ad went, it's Randy Jordan. Hi, Randy. <laughs> Good morning, morning stream. I am the most interesting man in the world of Warcraft. Yeah, <laughs> and I am doing great. Great. It's good to see you. It's good to hear you. I always wish I could. I, I wish you could overlap me with Tom just a second, so I could just say hello to my friend. Oh yeah, we could do that one he, day. We could do a little. He crossover. and I live like forty-five minutes away, but uh, from each other. But it may as well be forty-five hours. It just takes. <laughs> it takes so much for us to get together. Yeah, it's a lot, man. The four hundred five ain't yeah. ain't uh, clearing out for nobody. You know, you gotta <laughs> you gotta figure it out. Uh, well, anyway, it's good to have you here. Uh, no Nicole today; she had an appointment, but uh, we are going to recommend things nonetheless. And we're going to start with Brian, who has, like I said, two of these things. So Brian, take I it away. do. Yeah, we're going to start things off with a British TV series. This thing only lasted two seasons or two series, in uh, as they say in the UK, six episodes each, um, but absolutely worth checking out. Um, this uh, clip features, um, oh, maybe a voice you'll recognize. Uh, probably a voice you'll recognize. All right, let's try it out. God, my head hurt. A beautiful girl falls in love with a traitor whose passing secrets that don't make any sense. What is a bright stone? Who is a bright stone? It's a secret dangerous enough to get you killed, even by a friend. You're rambling. Have you even eaten today? It's my fault. You said he just fell. What? Step away from the story. Wait until the heat has passed on Tom's death. And... At worst, it was an accident. There are no accidents. Apparently. Remember that when I'm found floating in the Thames. God, I don't want to die like that. I want to just disappear. Happy birthday. It sounds like a 60s era Michael Caine for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. That's a good description of him. That I know who good. it is. That's a good description of him. <laughs> who, do you, who do you think it is, Randy? I thought I heard Ben Wishaw. That's exactly who it is. Oh, yeah, Ben okay. Wishaw. I like uh, our new Q, or our Q for the last couple of oh, yeah. James awesome. Bond films. That guy's good in every damn thing he, he does. He really is, yeah. and this is no different. Um, yeah, he's 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 been with uh, Daniel Craig for a few movies, Layer Cake, The Trench, and During Love, and of course, he just, uh, Skyfall. And, he always yeah, sounds like Paddington. He can't help it. Oh yeah, the Paddington <laughs> right, Bear he's movies. The voice of Paddington. Yeah, yes. and he's also in uh, the the reboot of that. Um, uh, uh, Emily Blunt. Uh, I can't think of her name. The Disney thing. Uh, umbrella. Oh. You fly with an umbrella. What's her name? Oh, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Yeah, Mary freaking the, Poppins. Right. He's in that. Returns or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah he's great. Um, yeah, no, he he's great, and this whole show is great. This is a TV show called The Hour. Not to be confused with the movie called The Hours. Boy, it's tough to tough to find. Do a search for one and not find the other. You have to put the UK after the hour to kind of separate the two. Um, this is if you're a fan of the old, um, I think Aaron Sorkin show uh, Newsroom about kind of the behind the scenes yes, of yes. a news that. program. Yeah. This is about kind of the 1950s UK prototype for that. This is like them developing one of the first versions of that news style program uh, called The Hour. Uh, it was an hour-long show called The Hour. And uh, Ben Wishaw plays a writer named Freddie. Um, he's uh, got a, a co-writer, a producer uh, named uh, Belle or Isabel, played by Rama Lagarai. 
Um, I don't know if I've ever seen her in anything else, but she is so freaking compelling every time she's on screen. She's got a little bit of an Elizabeth Moss kind of quality to her that's really good. Um, and then it's also your kind of third part of this this sort of triangle is Dominic West, Love who him. you know from The Wire, and he was I think Prince Charles in the more recent seasons of uh, He was something uh, the in Crown. The Crown. Yeah, I can't remember yeah. what. He was something. Yeah. Oh, whoops, that border's up. Sorry. Chad. Um, he is great. He is great in this too, uh, as kind of this this um, face of the show um that they that that is you know argues the fact that he's smart enough to be a writer but uh <laughs> uh but it gets kind of pushed down by the actual writers and producers it's got the, anton uh, less lesser in it who played yes! the game of thrones guy love him yes kyburn yeah he yeah. he is great and he is um he's in the season one he is your your boss of all three of them and he is fantastic. Like the, he is almost, he makes it worth watching the show just him alone. He's replaced in the second season by Peter Capaldi. Yeah. Who I don't know, played a doctor in something, something <laughs> yeah, or other. Some, some sort of small indie pop thing that happened in the UK. That's we right. never heard of over here. Yeah. Um, and if they didn't have enough people from the crown, you've also got Vanessa Kirby who was, uh, 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 Elizabeth's sister uh, in the first season with uh, Claire Foy. Prince, remember. Princess, the one that got lobotomized. Margaret, Princess Margaret. Margaret, right? She get lobotomized, which someone someone did. Uh, anyway, someone. Anyway, yeah. um, uh, anyway, she's great. Uh, Una Chaplin, uh, Charlie Chaplin's granddaughter, is in there. <laughs> I mean, it's got it's got an incredible cast, and it's it's just a really really good show. Here's the deal. You want to almost schedule this one. And why I say that is because you can watch it on Prime, but you need a an Acorn subscription to do it. Mm. Now, Acorn will give you a free seven-day subscription. You can get through 12 episodes in, in seven days. You can easily do that, but you want to be ready for it. You don't want to, like, say... Uh, House of the Diamonds or, or Dance with... with power rings or whatever other shows you're you're watching already you want to make sure that you're ready to start this show as soon as you fire up that um fire up that acorn uh subscription nice uh, i've that, never even heard of acorn it's just a way to yeah it's it's yeah. a it's a british um it's almost like uh this is our detective series uh streaming service mm. wow <laughs> is what it is but uh this is great and this is this is one um great reviews on rotten tomatoes only two seasons and you you're kind of you're resolved in the second season there's a little bit of a there's a, a bit of a, a yes or no cliffhanger that tim and i just decided is a yes <laughs> right, yeah. series and it's like oh no that could have gone one of two ways we're gonna say that it went in the way we wanted it to go uh, yeah. for that final that's episode. that's exactly how i feel about the newsroom like mm. I just oh was there yeah. was there an ending like that for the newsroom well, it too? It just it just doesn't end very satisfyingly. A, yeah. a better example is Last Man on Earth. I made up a whole ending. Like mm. they were kind of <laughs> they were le lending themselves to an ending, mm -hmm. but there could have been other outcomes. So sure. I just made right. it up. Yeah, make your own. Right. Make, pick your own ending. It's a, your own adventure or whatever. There you go. There you go. Good way to do I it. I see Tom Burke um, is in this. What, how is he in this? Because I love Tom Burke. He's of course uh, Praetorian Jack see. and Furiosa, but. He plays Bill Kendall. Oh, yeah, he's really good. Um, I love he him. He works for a competing, um, a competing show, and um, maybe tries to wrangle one of our one of our uh, top three build people into um, into working uh, on his show. Wasn't Tina uh, was saying? Wasn't he on Boardwalk Empire? Um, oh, maybe. I only think of him uh, as Furiosa now, but I know there's other stuff. Obviously, we mm, saw. I saw mm. him in that uh, God Only Forgives. I think I recommended it here. Maybe I didn't. Mm. That was a weird movie. Hard to watch. Okay. Uh, yeah. He was in. Uh, where is it? Also in The Crown. <laughs> <laughs> it, this is just basically we've taken all the actors from the crown and put new clothes on them yeah. and had them act like somebody else. He's got uh, uh he's in the new Blade Runner 2099 uh series that's being made. I'm very excited about that. Okay. Cool. Yeah, he's cool. That guy's cool. awesome. Yeah. Uh anyway, yeah, really like great 
great uh, uh, casting in this thing. And like awesome. I said, if you like Newsroom, put this on your list and watch it. Just schedule when you're going to watch it so that you can uh, watch it within those seven days. And is we it got Phil- to mention Mad Max, so reset the counter. Yeah. Right. Well, it came up during the John Cusack, favorite John Cusack yeah. movies list. No, the counter is hourly. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, for this show, it kind of has to be. Yeah, you got to bring it up. <laughs> Um, real quick, uh, does it, it's set in the fifties, you said it's set in the fifties. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like the, the launch of these. And these, it does a good job uh, of looking that way. Like it feels like you're in the time and for sure. Not it. It's very, it feels like you're watching British television, mad men. <laughs> cool. Okay. It, yeah, like it's I, that. Like, it's got that quality of like Mad Men did a great job of making you feel like you were watching a show from the fifties into the sixties. Compare yeah, the yeah. look of it to Lessons in Chemistry. I don't know what oh, that is. um, yeah, I'd say the very similar vibe. Like it, I thought I thought lessons in chemistry did a great job of that too. Oh, the so br- was, um, the, the Captain the, the Marvel, the Brie, Brie Larson, Brie Larson thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Captain Marvel. Do you did you not feel like um, <laughs> did you not feel like lessons in chemistry did that well, Randy? Or, or no, I felt I just I felt a very specific thing. Yeah. Like this is this must be what it looked like in the yes. early sixties. And so I, you know, I don't know. So I just want to, I want to believe it was good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, nope. This does the same thing as far as making you re- making it really feel like it's in that time frame. Nice. Nobody uses any phrasing. We, we did turn on subtitles a little bit because there are some people, especially in the first season who speak very quickly <laughs> with, with their thick British accent. And so you want to make sure you get all the, um, the weird mannerisms and phrases and things like that. But, uh, yeah, very, very good. Good. Uh, the Hour, not The Hours, The Hour, H-O-U-R, and uh, it's on Acorn on Prime. If you do search on Prime, you'll find it, and they'll say, would you like to start your seven-day uh, test period for Acorn? Hello. It actually says it in that accent, and then you click That's nice. You click the Jolly Good button, and it'll start your seven days. Oh, I want a Jolly Good button. Can we get that going? Can we make the internet change to just be a little goofier like that? I'd be I fine would, with I it. I would like that, too. We we have the technology. I can create websites with a Jolly Good button. Well, Brian, now we can tee up your second recommendal, and uh, it's all set yeah. to play. What do you got going here? We're going to move to a movie that came out a couple of years ago. Tina and I saw this thing. Uh, we saw trailers for this movie over and over and over, and we never got around to seeing the movie in theaters, um, so we watched it the other night, and we're like, oh my God, this is so good. All right, so. here we go. The African kingdom of Dahomey is at a crossroads. A new king, Gesu, has just taken power. Their enemy, the Oyo Empire, has joined forces with the Mahi people to raid Dahomey villages and sell their captives to European slavers an evil trade that has pulled both nations into a vicious circle. The powerful Oyo have new guns and horses, but the young king has his own fearsome weapon, an elite force of female soldiers, the Akojie, led by a general, Naniska. Now, these warriors are all that stand between the Oyo and the homies annihilation. It always sounds like they're saying Oreo. <laughs> the Oreos. Yeah. Um, this is a film called The Woman King, starring uh, Viola Davis. Um, this is uh, uh, early 1800s, this kind of elite force. It's almost like if I, I looked around to see if the the um, Wakandan Dora Milaje were modeled after oh, yeah. uh, these guys, because very, very similar in like their their. Um, abilities and their uh, uh, um, their strength and they're used as this this kind of weapon. Fantastic. Um, couldn't find any mention of the Dora Milaje being based on the Agogie, but um, this is about uh, this 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 group of warriors that are trained to act as a um, protector for the Dahomey uh, kingdom and uh, not just protecting it from the other. Um, kingdoms that want to kind of take it over, but also from, as you heard in that thing, the European slavers who are coming in and trying to um, uh, take the, the, the residents. 
and and even some of the other kingdoms selling some of their members to the European slavers, which I, we didn't realize was was a thing that mm. it wasn't just, you know, that it was coming from inside as well as coming from uh, the stuff we heard from the outside. Yeah. Um, this is um, God. What's what's a good comparison? Like. <laughs> We got a, kind of a gladiator vibe. I know we talked about gladiator recently, but this one kind of has that. That um, uh, I heard it described as a more accurate, more historically accurate three hundred. Like what hmm. three hundred did yeah. for the, the whole Spartan history thing, with obviously some embellishment. This was yeah. a more grounded, but also you know awesome look at a at a at a warrior's I, thing. A yeah, great comparison. Yeah, I could totally totally see that. Um, you've also got John Boyega as uh, one of the kings um, in this. Uh, um, I mentioned Viola Davis. Um, wasn't sure if I recognized anybody else except I think, oh yeah, Angelique Kidjo, a musician Angelique Kidjo is in this. But I think one of the guys, one of the European slavers was also on um, The Hour, which was really funny because we watched one right after the other. It was uh, a bizarre timing. Weird. Um but um, uh, what was I going to say? This is this is man, what a, a beautifully shot film um, in the wilds of Africa. Obviously, um, amazing choreographed fight scenes, and not super bloody and and violent. Um, uh, to answer Stephanie and Apetz's question in the chat room, it's violent. I mean, there's violence, but there's not like the kind of um, over the top gross, um, uh, you know, uh, someone walking around with a, a spear through their shoulder and blood just kind of gushing out kind of stuff. It's, it's, you know, it feels appropriate to the story matter. It does not feel, um, egregious at all. Mm. Um, I've been, this I've one, been trying to, like, I watched it when it first hit streaming mm -hmm. and I've been trying to describe it without uh naming a couple of movies that it is absolutely not but i can't stop comparing it to avatar and to mulan <laughs> and i know those i know yeah. i know i know but no, it's but like there's 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 i mean there is that warring kingdoms kind of element to to both of those that is spot on that comparison. yeah and i mm -hmm. and i really mean it as a compliment like those are mm -hmm. pretty great films <laughs> you know yeah and like this is yeah. also this belongs in that sort of list does yeah, Viola totally Davis, that. is there ever a moment where she goes Amanda Waller on everybody and tries to <laughs> get weird? Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, yeah, not uh, Amanda Waller would more use uh, uh, injunctions and paperwork to do the kind yeah. of thing that, uh, yeah. <laughs> that Nanisa does uh, sure. uh, to, to the uh, Warring Kingdoms. But um, yeah, this is this was great. Really, really enjoyed this one as well. And um Amazingly, uh, initially written by Maria Bello, yeah, star, yeah. star of the Cooler, <laughs> the Cooler and Payback, and uh, yeah, we've seen her in a bunch of things. It's it's it was really bizarre seeing her name come up and thinking, is it the same Maria Bello? And I looked up and like, yeah, sure enough, it's the same Maria Bello. Wow. Um, and uh, directed by Gina Maria Prince, uh, by the Wood, and I don't know if she's done anything else. Saw that name and like, oh well. Um, She's got a bunch of stuff, but I don't know. Secret Life of Bees. I've heard of the Old Guard. Oh, the Old Guard was that cool uh, um, uh, thing that oh, was on Netflix. I with, like that. Uh, Charlie's Theron. Yeah, yeah, yeah that Charlie's, was a Charlie's. You know, Char Charlie's Theron. You know, <laughs> that movie was awesome. Oh, and it that has really good. it has a uh, Paolo from Nikki and Paolo season in it, which who's oh, also at three hundred. So there you go. It's all big full circle. Well, it all done. connects. It all uh, yeah. it all wraps around. Anyway, that's called the Woman King. That one is on Hulu. Again, uh, the hour is on Amazon Prime slash Acorn, and the Woman King is on Hulu. Nice. I wanted to see Woman King, and I don't remember why I didn't. I think it just got away from me. So I'm glad no. it's out there. I want to see it. You should, and watch it on the biggest screen you've got because the like I said, it is shot so beautifully. Well, it's so my iPhone 14. Just kidding. That's not true. Yeah, do that. Yeah, exactly. Make uh, sure it's the Pro Max. Yeah. Okay. All right. As long yeah. as it's that, we're, f we're <laughs> as long fine. As the 14 Pro Max, just not the 14, not the SE. By golly, jeez. You know, you know what else was shot entirely in Africa? Mm. What's that? Uh, Furiosa. Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, wait. No, some of it was. That's true. No, you're right. Some of it was shot, shot in Australia. Yeah, I forgot about that. But a lot of it was. You're right. It's funny that they. <laughs> You'd think they'd have all the desert you'd need in Australia and just stay there, but they always go to 
Tunisia and like all these other places to film that stuff. Namibia is Namibia. The, yeah. the, the main thing that they like to drive around on. Yeah, and be extremely hot and sweaty. And, uh, all right, check this out. You don't even have to loo, 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 You don't even have to leave Hulu uh, because my recommendation happens there also, and I'm going to play it now. Cool. And you could also go to Disney if you have Hulu over there. But either way, today's a bit of a recommendation and a warning. Okay. <laughs> so here's your clip. Good morning, darling. Good morning. You got in late last night. Sorry, I was asleep before 11. That's fine. I got held up at the office. That's why I was late. What happened to your forehead? It's nothing. There was an accident. On the drive home last night, but it's nothing serious. What do you mean? Shouldn't you see a doctor? I went by the hospital last night, but they, they assured me it's nothing. And, um, they just gave me some tranquilizers. Robert, you should have called. You went to the hospital on your own? It was nothing. There's no need to worry. Okay. That's mm-hmm. a fairly innocuous scene. And mm-hmm. my gosh, we've said many times that we'll watch these two people in anything. So <laughs> yeah. we, we have yeah. to consider this. Yeah, you have <laughs> to. Was that Hong Chao? That was not Hong. Oh, yes, it was Hong Chao. Thank you. Um, I love her. My I gosh, forgot which yes, scene I, ca- I captured, but yes, that's from the first seg- <laughs> the first segment. Because this is important. This is an important note about the thing. It's basically three movies. And I don't mean that in a in in, a, in like an exaggerated way. It's not even a, really an anthology. It's three separate stories, but the cast are all the same actors but they play totally different roles and they're not connected other than York ghost Lathamos is a psychopath and he makes, makes the weirdest stories you've ever heard. So this is your dude from like, you know, uh, what was the one last year? I already forgot it. Not weird things. Uh, the poor things, poor things. Um, Mm -hmm. which was, you know, I, I regarded it quite well. I really liked it. I thought Emma Stone was amazing in it and she deserved that Oscar and I'm glad she won it. Um, this is their follow up, and it was very quick. They got this thing out fast. And uh, stars Emma Stone, Jesse, Jesse Plemons, Willem Dafoe, uh, Margaret Qualley's in this. Hong Chow, as you mentioned, is in this. She's fantastic. She's never bad in anything. Uh, Mon Mondu Athi, I'll say his name wrong, I'm sure. Oh, but yes, that dude from, from Station the... Eleven guy, I can't think. Station of... Eleven, yeah, or yeah. Uh, the Station Eleven. There was the other one where he found the portal in the basement, or was it? Was that also? Was that? That was Station Eleven, wasn't it? <laughs> That was Station Eleven. Okay. I think so. I may have conflated that. I thought with Station else. Eleven was the one uh, with yeah, uh, Mackenzie Davis. No. Yeah, oh shit! Uh, you're right. Gosh. Yeah, this Archive Eighty One. Archive, Archive Eighty One. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's t- I totally knew different. It was series. a name and then number, and I can I get those confused all the time. It's, it's Sorry. a year, like that John Cusack movie. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I can't believe I got that wrong. Anyway, uh, it is. Uh, it's what you okay. So if you've seen his movies, you've seen things like The Lobster, and you've seen things like Poor Things, and any of his other movies, really all of them, you know that he is freaking weird. Everything he does is weird, and it and what I like about his movies, even though there are at times extremely uncomfortable, very discordant, you know, strange things for sure. Um, what I like about them is I never know where they're going, and I don't know where he's, I don't know where they're headed ever. Like that's why I like it. It's new. It's different. I can't predict these plot points. And most movies have some, at least some predictability around them. His movies never have predictability around them. And these three stories, which may as well be three separate movies, they're essentially short films. Um, I think the total running time is almost three hours, so it's actually kind of long. But you get three very distinct stories. I don't want to get too much into the plot of each one because, I don't know, if you're going to see it, you're going to want to just sort of experience it for yourself. But all three are very strange. And if you have not liked his movies before this, you will freaking hate this movie. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Tina. By yeah. The way, you haven't said the name of the film yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> shitoutofluck.com. It's Kinds that's of right. Kindness. Kinds of Kindness. Which, to this moment, I don't understand the title at all. It's got oh. nothing to do with nothing in this movie. <laughs> it's just a word. It's words he put up there for real. Yeah. Like there's nothing yeah. tonally or like story wise that tie into this. Um, with the exception, I guess, as you could probably, there's some parts where you could probably like apply it, but I don't think so. This is like a title with a title. Just it's just a title. It's word soup. Exactly. Uh, the Wraith in the chat. So, uh, 
all I can say is if you like his work, then you're, then this is really one of those. And I was telling Brian pre-show early on, the one thing that makes his movies different, uh, or, or can be different about his movies is when they're set in a period piece setting, they're less weird, partly because it's a place out of time. And so you don't feel like it's here and now you don't connect it to real life exactly much. exactly yeah. but if you take something like the lobster or you take uh what was the other one with um the weird the kid deer, killing of a sacred deer killing of a sacred deer and yeah. now kinds of kindness you take these movies i haven't seen his first movie i, I hear i should dog tooth dog tooth i haven't seen it uh it wasn't as weird it was weird but not as weird as the latest he probably ones. wasn't allowed to be is weird by <laughs> producers and stuff because now he's got a he's kind of got a free pass right he can kind of do whatever he wants um but kinds of kindness is a return to kind of the lobster era and i don't even know how to describe it it's there's stuff in here where you're just like what um, the hell just happened and it's all being acted impeccably like that's the hmm. thing you have some of the greatest actors working today in my opinion emma stone is great in this thing in all three of her parts they're all very wildly different parts Jesse Plemons playing very different parts and also really stretching here. He's not just the, I don't know, he, he can sometimes be cast a little bit into a hole. And this yeah. is not him. I also just love watching him work. He's one of my favorite actors to watch. So there's nothing wrong with him, anything he's doing here. And Willem yeah. Dafoe, oh my gosh, he does some stuff in this movie. <laughs> it's just like, come on, dude. I cannot believe you guys filmed that. I just some oh, of this no, stuff. Really? Yeah, okay. there's moments like... All right, I'll tell, I'll tell you one just so you know. If you ever wanted to see Willem Dafoe, who is now, what, in his 70s or something? Uh, born in 55, uh, six, late 60s, whatever it is. If you ever wanted to see him make out, tongues and all, with Emma Stone, good news. <laughs> 69 years old, by the way. Not even 70. Yet. Okay. But if you ever wanted yeah. to see that, I got uh, great yeah, news for you. Have that. I've had that one on my list for such a long time. And I, don't, and I don't mean like off in the corner on a couch somewhere in the, the distance. I mean, if you ever wanted a close-up, literally, of these two people's well, mouths doing the... Yeah, if you're, if you're going to pay these two people to do that and pay for all the Tic Tacs involved, you're going to get good shots. You're not going <laughs> to put them at a distance. Yeah, you're not going to waste your time there. There's also a scene where her, Margaret Qualley, uh, Jesse Plemons, and the guy's name I can't pronounce very well... Uh, Mahamdu Athi. Athi, thank you. Yep. Those yep. guys, um, they do a scene that I cannot believe they did that scene. You're just wow. going to have to yeah. see it. Or not. Like, I'm not going to recommend this to people who are put <laughs> off by this level of weirdness. But I like yeah. it because one, it's, the only, it's one of the only directors I can watch and writers where I go, I don't know where he's going. And it's not absolute nonsense. That's different. Yeah. This, is, this is stuff that's just surrealistic and and doesn't make practical sense but in the context of what they're showing me it's almost a horror movie without the horror i don't know how to quite put that i just watched long legs for example uh and long legs is good although i think it's a little hammy on nick cage's part but whatever we'll talk about that when it's actually streaming somewhere but um I had to use a more complex way to watch that. One. <laughs> sure. Um, I've been talking to Monica about it because it didn't quite land for either of us in a couple of ways, but it's interesting. Mm -hmm. But that's like a horror movie that's most uh, supposed to make you feel uncomfortable and shock you and have moments of like real mm -hmm. discordance. That's what he does, but he does it with amazing actors and he gets away with it somehow. Lots of vibrant colors. Oh, it's like, beautiful. That's a thing. Beautifully shot. It's interesting how like that's the current thing we're into. Uh, the, the filmmakers making odd scenes for you mm -hmm. like jordan peele does this mm -hmm. like they use a lot of vibrant colors yeah they do that's that a lot he does that quite a bit he also it's like a it's almost like that's not exactly like a, a wes anderson style there's something wes anderson adjacent well, pastels right yeah He's, it's something like mm -hmm. that um, 70s colors yeah, yeah. but it, but also like he often invokes like hospital colors mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very odd how yeah. he can make you feel unsettled and uh, perfectly happy at the same time yeah there's something about also this movie being set essentially in modern la that just makes it weirder and i can't explain why um but yeah gwen stacy and green goblin kissing is a thing and it's gross <laughs> uh yeah. anyway well, you're the I, one recommending it oh, i don't no, have to watch it that's what i'm saying like it's not i, I know there are people tina and others 
<laughs> who see yep. a Yorgos Lanthimos movie and go, yeah, not, no thanks, not, not my me. thing. Yeah. And yeah. I respect that, and I don't want you to see this because it's all the things you th- don't like about it. This is not for everybody. But if you uh, are sort of at least curious about what he makes and does, this is really interesting. And um, I'm convinced Emma Stone is basically like, I don't know what she is. She's the next Meryl Streep or something. Like, she's mm-hmm. very good. Mm-hmm. She she picks she picks some great roles that aren't your cookie-cutter rom-com one after another isn't that didn't haven't we seen this kind of movie before with her i mean her um her turn in the curse which i recommend told a while back um is is just a weird off-putting but fascinating character and and i feel like she takes these roles that are so multi-leveled and multifaceted yep and everybody gets naked at one point just one <laughs> everybody gets naked margaret qualley we get to... Well, just like life, everybody gets naked in life too. No, it's true. We all have to get naked. Yeah. I took yeah. a shower today. Guess how I did it? Naked. Yeah, naked. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, streaming now on Hulu slash Disney Hulu, which is a very weird thing to see, by the way. I was telling Brian about this. <laughs> I log into Disney, and because I have the two tied together now, I see up top, the very first banner is Kinds of Kindness, right next to it, Bluey, season whatever they're on. Right, yeah, those are the same. Mm-hmm. And uh, like it's this mix of hard R weird, you know, Hulu business mixed in with all this Disney stuff. It's a very weird thing to see on disney.com. But uh, anyway, it, or disneyplus.com. Anyway, check it out, available now, watch it if you don't hate things like this. And if right. you do, and, and you know, uh, speaking of Jesse Plemons, I just looked it up. Uh, Civil War is coming to Max in a week. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I never I was going to see it in theaters it. and I just thought, you know what? I can't go to a theater for this. I'm going to wait until it gets home. It was just so, it was so like, at the time, it felt like it was so ready for people to pop off about. So I kind of mm-hmm. not avoided it, but I was like, I know I'm going to see this. I love Alex Garland. Mm-hmm. I love all these actors. I'm going to see this, but I had to wait. So I'll, I'll see that when it comes out. Uh, right. Randy, let's swing it over to you. So again, that was Kinds of Kindness Hulu, all right, for uh, all the uh, shit out of luck.com. Shit out of luck.com, yeah. All right, As Randy. I've been saying for weeks and weeks, I am deep, deep in my comfort food phase. I, it is like, it's been a, <laughs> it's been a summer of comfort can't, food for me. And imagine what uh, stressful things in life you're trying to <laughs> not have to pay attention to right now, Randy. It's, it's just, uh, it's, I'm, I'm actually watching a lot of these at the office. Like I go to the office and I've mm. got a, my second screen showing me some of my headphones on while I'm working. <laughs> Cause I'm like, like, I need that comfort food. So like, and by the way, I, I've decided that the limit is every two years. Mm. Uh, I, I will watch interstellar every two years. Mm. And it's like, there's only so much of that, uh, emotion that I can deal with. Mm-hmm. So this movie is my latest every two years. I'm not watching it more often than that, but I just watched it to feel something. All right. So you, let's see what you, we, you're, you, you know what it is. Everybody knows what it is. Yeah. Let's, it, but... let's see what you felt. That in grid section 1428, the particles were predominantly coarse, but in 29, they're, uh, they're much finer and they should be ideal for chem analysis. Oh, wow. Did everybody hear that? Mark just discovered dirt. Should we alert the media? Sorry, what are you doing today, Martinez? Uh, making sure the MAV is still upright. Well, I'd like you to know that visual inspection of the equipment is imperative to mission success. I also would like to report that the MAV is still upright. <laughs> Watney, you keep leaving your channel open, which leads to Martinez responding, which leads to all of us listening, which leads to me being annoyed. Roger that. Martinez, the captain, would like you to please uh, shut your smart mouth. <laughs> We would prefer to use a different adjective to describe Martinez's mouth. <laughs> oh, did Beck just insult me? <laughs> Dr. Beck, and yes. Uh, happy to turn the radios off from here, Commander. Just say the word. Hey, uh, yo, Hanson, that constant communication is the hallmark Shut him of off. any team that... No. Oh, excuse me. Ooh, Randy, tell, do tell. What'd you watch? Bring Mark Watney home. That's what I've got to say. It, like, I had, you know, two years is about enough to forget, like, the real details of how you know like when you feel what you feel and this movie is just it's got the action it's got the comedy it's got the you know that that there's a romantic feeling you can get for a character you know when it's when it's a really kind of a character study i just love i love the martian i i i think that you should watch it i'm surprised we've never recommended it if there's somebody out there who hasn't seen this movie please watch the martian it's streaming on max it's so great that mm. is matt damon yeah, it is Matt Damon and the great director Ridley Scott. Man, that that dude. Yeah. Look, he can make a couple of bummers here and there. 
Napoleon, for example. <laughs> Although I haven't his, seen the director's cut, maybe yeah. that's better. That's what I'm. That's what I'm going to watch. Like the theater. That's what yeah. I'm going to do. I, have you seen that? You saw the. For, uh, I saw the theatrical release. What, yeah. what was the in, main in theaters? What was the main beef with that? Just not to switch that, topics. Uh, but. That he uh, did not shoot off the nose of the Sphinx. Mm. I think was the that that was uh, that that was like added for the film. Like uh, let's make up stuff about Napoleon that he didn't do. That is such a stupid thing to do. It is, yeah. I it's hope that was studio that. interference and he can like take it out of his director's cut. But I will I watch the director's so. cut because a lot of times those impress me. You know, I've always said Kingdom of Heaven is one of the best and worst movies I've ever seen. Worst theatrical, mm-hmm. amazing director's cut. Uh, but anyway, Randy, so uh, The Martian, written by ex-Warcraft 3 uh, coder, <laughs> Um, right. still, man, that yeah. movie, I feel like is an all timer. We're going to look back on that in 30, 40 years and go, what a great movie. The Martian was, it's always yeah, going to be good. And, you know, you have to talk about book versus movie with this, with this movie, because it is one of the, those examples of as soon as everybody read the book, you're like, oh, that's going to be a movie very soon. Mm-hmm. And why, you know, like, why is that? Why, why do some books do that? You know, and like others were like, well, they're going to make a movie, but it's not going to be good. You know, like, how do you, what, what are the differences? It's, it's really hard to say, but like across the board for the Martian, perfect casting. Like, it's just so incredible. All the people back on earth that have these small, important roles in this movie are perfectly cast, you know? So it's not, it doesn't just all fall on our, our main star here. Like, but even then, like you can, you could, you could say, uh, well, I like the book more than the movie. That's great. They're different. They're like, it's the, the, the movie has this, like all of these visuals for you. Where where the book you're really focused on what the character's thinking, mm-hmm. and is you just don't really who cares what's going on like what things look like, you know? Yeah, I love the movie the- is freaking beautiful. He's in a he you know he's in a a, a home base out on on Mars, yeah. and the interior of that thing is this, like one of the best sets you'll ever see. You know, just yep. stuff like that. I also think they don't give enough credit. Well. Some people don't get enough credit for the other roles in this thing. So I think like Kristen Wiig in a non-comedic role, she's amazing in this. All the people, Benedict Wong, one of my favorite Benedict Wong like sub roles ever uh, as the Chinese yeah, rep got, is so good. They've got they've got Sean Bean back at home, and he's he's so concerned. He's so concerned yep. the entire time. So very, very concerned. Yep. Sebastian um, Stan, they, they, Jeff Daniels. This back, cast is back crazy. At home, back at home, they have the one of the biggest caricatures that's ever been put in film, which is Donald Glover <laughs> as Uber Nerd. Yeah. He's <laughs> great, though. He's really good he in is, it. He is great. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I totally agree. Yeah. Totally agree. That Love movie's, it. That movie's awesome. You're making me want to watch it. Um, Where is the streaming yeah. right now? It's on Max. Um, it includes Nick Mohammed, you know, from Ted Lasso, uh, Nathan from Ted Lasso, uh, like just, just incredible cast all up and down. There's a bunch of people on a, on a spaceship who turn around and go back to Mars to save Mark Watney. And that, like that includes Jessica Chastain and Kate Mara, <laughs> like Michael Pena's on that thing. But dude, I love these. I love these people. <laughs> yeah, uh, he... Sebastian Stan is in that ship. Oh yeah. Okay. Hey, you winter soldier. Yeah. yeah. I love also, all also guys. streaming on uh, Amazon Prime. So if you don't have Max, you can watch on Amazon Prime. Oh, well. Prime has it. Very nice. That's good. Yeah. I had to. Uh, sorry, I had to do a really quick edit on QuickTMS.li because. Uh, uh, oh, did we? <laughs> oh, yeah. We. You. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be something yeah. else. Yeah, that, you told true. me 2001, so I built all that stuff, and uh, so oh, was there a red on I, air light. <laughs> well, I can't be blamed for a red on air light when somebody changes what they're doing for quick DMS during I, the segment. Uh, I changed it. I changed it from for Scott. Scott yeah. needed me. He needed me to change. It. Well, I just I noticed that it was something I did about a year ago. Um, <laughs> But you know what? O one is also very good. Two thousand one Space Odyssey. So if you're in the mood, look. If you're in the mood for space shit, turns out there's yeah. a ton of stuff right now that is just awesome, old and new. Get out there and watch it. All yeah, right? and and two thousand one is another huge piece of comfort for me. Like there's and it's because it's quiet, you know, and it's very contemplative. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, the Martian is comforting because, well, you know, I know how it's going to end. Right. But um, just so there's something about this character. You know, he's just, he's just so interesting and he's so brash, you know? Yeah. It's just, it's really good. Plus he makes poo potatoes out there in space. (laughs) That's right. Right. I mean, think about that. Think about how, like, if you have to survive, you're on another planet Mm -hmm. 
And all you can think of is, well, if I'm going to have a potato, I got to use my poo to grow it. Sure. That's a big deal. some pee-pee water, too, like yeah. they did in Waterworld. Exactly. Pee-pee water and poop potatoes. Pee-pee. Yeah. <laughs> pee-pee water poop potatoes. Exactly. Uh, all right. Well, this is fantastic. I want to see everything we've talked about today, with the exception of I don't think I need to see kinds of kindness again. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I t- you you I'm recommended good. the lobster a couple years ago, and I yeah. went and watched it, and I was like, mm, maybe not for me, yeah. I, not a second time. I'll watch Kinds of Kindness if you say so, but not a second. Yeah, time. it's yeah. not his stuff is not a second time kind of stuff. I mm-hmm. think maybe no. Poor Things maybe is rewatchable. Maybe I think maybe um, the favorite for me would be the only one of his that I would watch again. I like yeah. the favorite, and that was easily the least weird of his of his things. Oh, by yeah, by far, dude. Yeah, by miles. <laughs> I will say this: the one thing I did like about this, it's, um, he has his characters tend to be like, yes, I am coming over there. I will see you soon. I'm going to, mm-hmm. but but it's like a lot of really flat delivery on purpose. He does he has his actors do that on purpose. This is less of that, so it does feel like it's more dynamic. The things people are saying, they really mean it. There's some emotion. Like, it's not just deadpan, uh, you know, like the lobster. It's just a lot of deadpan deliveries. It's yeah, really yeah. weird. Um, I always forget. You know what I always forget is in the lobster is uh, Step Brothers guy. Um, oh, not, John C. Or, uh, John C. Riley. yeah. Riley? John yeah. C. Riley. yeah. I always forget he's in that. Until I, I and I've, too. I've seen yeah. that one twice. That's a weird one. Anyway, uh, the, these, the, these, yeah. the screenwriter for The Martian is yeah. Drew Goddard. This is my last note. Yeah. Um, he and Ridley Scott are making another movie. Oh, nice. Are they, um, uh, what's it? What is it? Do we know? It's called Wraiths of the Broken Land. That's all we know. Oh, well, they've, <laughs> they've got a studio to give them money to make a movie called Wraiths of the Broken Land. I'm in. Let's do it. If it's science fiction, <laughs> sign me up. If it's not, I guess I'll see it too. Uh, well, excellent. This is great. Go check it all out. Quick TMS.li. Randy, uh, this weekend, film sack. What are we doing? You want to tell the fine folks? I've I've totally forgotten. I have too. <laughs> uh, okay. Omega Doom. Gonna, oh, Omega, Omega Doom. Yeah, that's why I've forgotten because it's Omega yeah, Doom. Yeah, easy to forget. <laughs> <laughs> and we kind of inserted it, but it's this. Uh, I've never even heard of it until you guys brought it up last week. So I'm kind of yeah. stoked. I don't know how how this one gets attributed to me. I don't know how I. Uh... <laughs> we were we were looking at Just Watch during a pre-show about okay. nine months ago, and you just said, "Oh, Omega Doom. Look at that." And yeah. we were, and I was like, "Oh, put that on our list." And we, we never even gotten. heard of it until <laughs> I felt like I hadn't heard of it until last week, but clearly we talked about it before. But I look, I love me some uh, Rugger Hauer. I like him a lot. Yeah. And it sounds post apocalyptic. I also like that. So I'm in for whatever bullshit 1996's Omega Doom serves up. Let's go. Right on. Right, bring it. Bring Randy, have a fantastic yeah, you know week. What, you know what? It was it was before we watched The Hitcher. We oh. Were, we were. Uh, we were about. Oh, we were in a Rutger, yeah, yeah. Rutger kick, yeah. Oh, yeah. How about I just hope it's not. I just hope it's not like um, Daughters of Satan, where the lead actor is about the only thing interesting about it. <laughs> yeah, we will see. Yeah, we're gonna find out one way or the other. Uh, have a good week. Do your dailies, you Randy. Too. Get out there and do Bye. your dailies. Bye. Okay. See ya. <laughs> All righty, that is gonna do it for that. I got one final thing to take us out on. We received this while the show was going, and I thought it was interesting. Uh, So we're going to read it now. This is a quick text from Alan. Alan! Alan! (laughs) He says, on finding a thing in your chip bag. This is the weird root thing I found in the chips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Says, I'm an engineer for a packaging equipment company, and I'm regularly at Frito-Lay plants. Tell them about this. They want to know these things. Food processing places take foreign objects in food very seriously. I wouldn't call it foreign, though. It's potato root. Whatever. Well, foreign. It's foreign to foreign to the chip, the edible chip part of the potato. That's true. I will it's admit, foreign. I was yeah. this close to just tasting the root. I didn't do it. I'm sure it had a dusting of cheddar uh, on it. Yeah, but, uh, it would have been fine. Yeah. I just, it just seemed wrong, and I didn't do it. Anyway, you eat roots all the time. Yeah, that's true. I like a. I mean, it's basically a. It's just potato wire, right? Yeah. <laughs> Potato wire. It's it's the potato marionette strings. That's right. It is. Yeah, Uh it's the Thunderbolt potato style. That's it. (laughs) Says from the production code uh, printed on the bag when it was filled uh, with these chips, they'll be able to tell the day and time it was made. That's interesting. And also which plant made it and on what production line it was bagged on. Good lord, that's a lot of information on one bag. Um, This this says uh, this might lead to them reviewing a few things in that plant and the equipment on this specific line. To find out how that happened, uh, something had to fail in quality control to get you uh, what they or what came to, you, and they want to fix it. 
Uh, let's see. Don't think of it as a being Karen to get free things. Think of it as you are helping it not to happen to someone else. Oh, well, that's a great yeah. way of looking yeah. at it. That's so, a yeah. very good perspective. Uh, you know, I, I only thought about it from the us, you know, getting free stuff uh, perspective, the Karen perspective. But this is this is absolutely something that they should want to know about. Yeah, for sure. He finishes by saying, and the best Frito-Lay quality control fail story I have is the day I was at a plant and they were having issues with one of the machines that seasons the chips. Oh, the seasoning machine is probably my favorite machine. <laughs> right. You, you yeah. know, if I'm going to get a machine, that's the one to get. Anyway, says they had a large bin of chip bags free for the taking by staff because all of the chips had gone through that machine, had double the amount of seasoning on them, so they couldn't sell them. It's a little like my uh, uh, <laughs> lucky charms. Uh, marshmallows yeah. or something. You're, yeah, yeah, right. It reminds me of that. It's just too good to be true. Anyway, yeah. I took an armload of over-seasoned jalapeno cheddar chips to D&D that weekend, and they were great, says Alan. <laughs> Unfortunately, all the... 20 sided die stuck together. Yep. And, uh, yep. But they were lickable. Very lickable. Like, mm, yes. Why are all these dice orange now? <laughs> That's an amazing story. Thank you, Alan. And also, That's you great. know what? I do think I am going to. I have the bag still. Yeah. You still have the bag. So it's got yeah. the, it's got all the numbers on it that you need to give to them. So that's great. Yeah. And I'll just be, yeah. I just won't be an asshole about it. I'll just be like, right. Hey, just so you guys know, I got this root. No big deal. Just probably something you should know. Here's the bag number, blah, 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 and then be done with it. Exactly. Exactly. And I'll bet because you're so nice about it, they give you more free stuff than they would have had you been a Karen about it. Yeah, I'll bet you're right. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this guy being nice and helping us out. Uh, here's a here's here's an actual Frito. But just in case, I'll say, P.S., I run a podcast a network. I have <laughs> this many look Twitter at followers. Follower yeah. numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on these, these, and these, and these platforms. So just, you know, just so you know. Just kidding. I'm not doing that. That's, right. uh, that's, that's going right. to do it for us. Frogpants.com slash TMS will get you to everything you need. That includes song requests. And that's something we're going to do right now before we leave. Brian, who was it? Yeah. Uh, this is a request going out to... I didn't have it queued up. Can you believe that? I didn't have it queued up, Scott. Well, you had to fix the 2001 Space Odyssey. I understand. I was doing so much of that during the show. So much of that. Yeah. Um, holy crap. Why am I not finding it? Uh, hold on a second. The song is that. Oh, yeah. Why isn't that in the list? There it is. Oh, because it came in. Um, <laughs> I was looking at the wrong. It's it's September now. Did you know that? Scott? I did know September. that. I can't even believe yeah. that it's September, but it is. I hate it. Yeah. yeah. And I have not created the filter for September. You know what? I Justin. love it for September herself because she's going to have a birthday. I like that. Oh, yeah. But otherwise, yeah. this month can take a poo. Actually, I kind of like September. What am I saying? It's I nice. like September. It starts yeah. cooling off. My gosh, mm -hmm. we need that. It's been 90-something lately yeah. in Denver. Justin wrote in and said, hey, Sonic and Bomberman. Great pick there. I'm having an eventful year and thought I'd ask for a cover for my 37th birthday, getting close to the old lady bumper. By the time you play this, I may be getting my first home ahead of getting married at the end of September. It's an eventful time, but I'm glad to have you guys to listen to as I was house hunting and driving to and from work. The fun you have with the show carries over to all the listeners and makes my days better. Love the show, though. Signed, Justin. Oh, that's nice. It's really nice. And also, you Very do get nice. one of these. Let's party! You're still young enough. You're fine. You're Heck good. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a band called the Proto Men. These guys are awesome. They did a... Um, uh, very clever way of doing cover songs. They did a soundtrack to a movie that does not exist. Um, let me find let me find that one because this one is from an album called Present a Night of Queen, 2012 album, where they do Queen covers, mm. as you might guess from that name. Yeah. Uh, but they did an album called uh, The Cover Up. Came out in 2015. It's called The Cover Up Original Motion Picture Soundtrack. Only here's the thing. There's no movie called The Cover-Up that came out in 2015 that they would have done a soundtrack to. It was an excuse for them to not only do some amazing covers, but also uh, um, also insert dialogue from a movie that doesn't exist. Crazy. <laughs> really, really that cool. is a weird yeah. idea. I love it. That's awesome. It's great. It's so, so good. Um, anyway, this is a cover of Queen's Hammer to Fall. This is, again, from the Proto Men's uh, album, A Night of Queen from 2012. See you guys tomorrow for a Thursday edition with Wendy and more of TMS. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com.
You mean a penis? That's exactly what I mean.